तो हम हट जाएंगे तो तुम्हें करना होगा हेलो अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एम आई ऑडिबल टू ऑल सो गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल द डिग्नेटरीज फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एंड डेलीगेट्स अ वॉर्म वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू द फ्यूचर बिलोंग्स टू दोज हु कैन हार्नेस द पावर ऑफ ए आई फॉर good by combining human creativity and empathy with machine intelligence so with this quote i would like to unveil the topic of this workshop which is important and interesting in the field of nursing that is artificial intelligence in nursing and overview we hope everyone to have an enriching and knowledge filled insight into the topic of artificial intelligence before we start with the program may i invite miss cecilia ma'am uh, miss cecilia ma'am the organizing chairperson uh, miss nirmal kin ma'am the guest of honor uh, miss uh, uh, mr gopi chandran and all the dignitaries miss shashi mavar uh, on the dais <laughs> a hearty welcome to all the dignitaries so now before we start with the program may i invite uh, ms cecilia ma'am associate professor college of nursing aims who is the organizing secretary of this workshop to kindly come up, come up on the dais and formally welcome the guests good morning everyone it is a great pleasure to have you all today for the update on ai in a scene i am delighted to welcome all of you on this day this update provides a great opportunity for us to learn about how ai is transforming the healthcare and industry and how it can be used to improve patient care outcomes at the outset i would like to welcome all of you for this update on ai in nursing a very warm uh, welcome to dr sashi mavar uh, organizing chairperson of the workshop who has kindly consented to be here for this inaugural session a heartfelt welcome to ms nirmal ns of aims new delhi for consenting and uh, gracing us on this occasion A warm welcome to Dr. Gopi Chandran, Post Basic Coordinator, who has always been our support, and thank you for coming. And a warm welcome to you, sir. And a warm welcome to all the uh, my faculty colleagues, uh, Miss Babita and Miss Manita, who are there working for this workshop. And you will see the fruits of the work done. And a warm welcome to all the participants. like you are the champions of the day you know there are a lot of transformations in healthcare that has happened throughout day in and out and you can you would have witnessed many and many it to be witnessed so on this occasion it is like i have we are very much privileged to have you all amidst us to enlighten the knowledge to light the spark and to bring about changes i extend a warm welcome to my dear students who are the organizers of this update they have worked for many days 
and it you can see the success of their work in the entire share program that is being organized and once again i welcome you all and wish you all a happy learning thank you ma'am for the welcome now may we have our organizing chairperson dr shashi mawar associate professor and msc coordinator college of nursing aims to kindly unfold the theme of this workshop ma'am a very good morning everyone to a very good morning all the dignitaries on the dais mrs nirmal kane dr gopi chandran mrs celia ms manita and ms babita and dear participants the theme of today's workshop is as per the changing trends which are there which have been occurred during the last few decades and you all have witnessed few of the changes which have been there uh you might have seen there are changing trends in the uh, prevalence of diseases the new emerging infections and with this with all these things uh, around us we also have seen that there are various methods of teaching and learning which have changed and we with the time we need to go with those changes so uh, even the students they are not as uh, they used to learn in the past maybe 20 years two decades back or three decades back we, we only have we never had computers we never had anything we were, it was just the physical books or the notes which we used to get in the classrooms and we used to study from those but with the changing trends in the digitalization in the technology in the advancements of in all the spheres even the teaching and the learning methods have changed so theme of this workshop is artificial intelligence and overview now what is an artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is just like the human brains as the human brains work the computers they are uh, like trying to mimic what the as the human brains work so it is not only uh the social media where you might have gone through the uh, instagram instagram has a, a prefixed uh, uh, or like uh, it it has a, a feature of uh, this uh, artificial intelligence if you search one particular thing you will get all the reels which are related to it right so that so the the instagram is able to pick up those things and give you those those related things so similarly we need to or incorporate this artificial intelligence in our patient care in our research in our teaching methods so how this coding of computerization can be done and how uh, we can uh, incorporate or apply these features or this coding system in the learning uh, in the newer learning methods so this is what we are going to talk about today the whole day with this i wish you a very happy learning and uh, with your active participation this workshop is going to be a success thank you thank you ma'am as ma'am rightly said that ai is changing our lives so thank you ma'am for unfolding the th uh, topic now i invite dr l gopi chandan sir associate professor college of nursing aims to the dais and kindly grace the occasion thank you very good morning to everyone so uh, today our chair person uh, dr sashi nova and guest of honor uh, ms nirmal kain the organization committee uh, ms sushilia and ms mamita uh, manita and babita and all uh, students those bsc second year students and all uh, nursing officers so first of all i would like to welcome you all for this important uh, you know workshop i think uh, dr sashim has already sensitized you that uh, it's uh, how this need of the hour we talking about artificial intelligence in nursing i am very proud to say that uh, because uh, we college of nursing faculty and student uh, especially msc level students we have conducted many research which used mobile applications we were able to monitor the patients remotely monitor the patients their outcomes 
which you had expected that how the artificial intelligence integrate into medical and also in nursing practice. We already applied and even uh, very uh, recently three of the students, our MSc students, uh, they are getting scholarship in Nanyang Polytechnic. I think first time in the history, the nursing students getting into that, that type of scholarship. If they are competitive with the other medical student, they are caught in the top, you know, in the selection list. Even uh, when I was in the meeting, uh, so with uh, the polytechnic, uh, you know, uh, faculties, uh, initially they didn't mention the nursing, uh, you know, our uh, science. Then I was, I was interact with them, we are doing so many work, then they told, yes, uh, nurses also can do that. But again, it's a great support by, you know, uh, our Dean Research, even uh, Dr. Sashimawar also guided her very well. Then finally, they were, you know, able to, you know, prove that how that, you know, we are already, you know, we are, because I know this younger generation is, uh, you know, very, very fast in terms of learning and also they are critically, creativity has a lot as compared with us because we didn't get that opportunity exposure. What about the, because even we were, when start the mobile we are using in smartphone, we found a lot of resistance from our side. But even younger generation start from three, four years, they started to use mobile phone very quickly. So that culture made us now become very common culture for us using the technology very friendly maps. But it is it is a day to day life. But when you come to the medical science, integrating this kind of technology into medical sciences, we need really to think about the quality, you know, that kind of things more important because we are assuring the patients what we are showing their outcomes and same time whatever we are, you know, able to investigate, whatever we are reporting them, it should be make that much, you know. Sensitive. So it is so so we have to sensitively to think how we are using this type of technology. Definitely, there is a lot of advantages, there is no doubt about it. And same time, we have to ensure the quality for the nurses need to be more sensitized. That's why we were especially I got called from RPC uh, from uh, DNS. Sir, really we wanted to attend this uh, workshop and we are not able to get opportunity. Then I told her, yeah, please contact our, uh, you know, coordinator. No, no, sir, they are, we are not getting called. But when I come to know today, I think four or five hours not able to come and they are not, uh, you know, we are getting only 24 hours today available, present over here. And uh, that's really, it's uh, very painful because someone is waiting for to attend this type of workshop because this is still overview. You, you are going to build up your, you know, thus nurses today, I expected all nursing officer work in, you know, clinical, they are highly potential. And they have a lot of, you know, good qualifications. But beyond that, they have to work. They set up the career. You should not think that, confine that you are working what today. It is it is going to be your career of tomorrow. Beyond that, you have to work. You have to open your eyes. You attend so many things whenever get the opportunity. That's what I might request to you, CNO and DNS. Please arrange so many. Because College of Nursing have limitation. We can able to confine only 10 workshops, which is funded. But this type of workshop should be carried out more to take the help from our faculty, we are ready. We are also part of the institution. Anytime we are ready and take the, you know, this workshop, you see integration of, we call the medical people, our people are there and, you know, utilizing computer department. It's all, a, today it's an interdisciplinary approach. We are trying to work as a group to, you know, improvise our, you know, knowledge and same time, we have to come out with a very, as a empath nurses tomorrow. That only bring the change of the society. The change is what we are expected day to day, our patient clinical care, patient care outcomes. With that, anyway, I have 30 minute session. I don't want to bring it within that, uh, you know, uh, currently. So, uh, wish you all the best. And once again, congratulations to the organization. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for the powerful speech. So, as I said, yes, our college faculty members and our teachers are effectively participating in shaping our students. Thank you, sir. Now we invite our esteemed guest of honor, Ms. Nirmal Kane, ma'am, Nursing Superintendent, Ames, New Delhi, to come and address the delegates. Thank you. Good morning to all. It's indeed a great pleasure to be here in this workshop on artificial intelligence in nursing, being organized by student of College of Nursing, Ames, New Delhi. I congratulate the organizing committee who have taken the efforts 
to conduct this well being well needed workshop artificial intelligence is an emerging concept in healthcare which helps nurses to provide quality care nurses need to have updated knowledge and adequate skill in artificial intelligence i sincerely hope that this workshop will teach us about all aspects of artificial intelligence relevant to nursing so i request each one of you attending this workshop please utilize the knowledge gained in your daily nursing care practices i wish the students and the faculty uh, a great success thank you and wish you all the best thank you ma'am for your encouragement and inspiring words so as we are leading towards the end of this inaugural session so may i invite ms babita sahu ma'am tutor college of nursing to kindly present the vote of thanks thank you a lovely and warm morning to all the dignitaries on the dais of the dais for the faculties and participants it is my proud privilege to propose vote of thanks on this occasion on behalf of the organizing team firstly i would like to thank the almighty for his countless blessing and making the day a magnificent one i extend a very hearty vote of thanks to the guest of honor mrs nirmal ken nursing superintendent aims for her words of motivation and encouragement i thank our principal professor lata venkateshan though she is not physically present but it is her vision which inspires us to carry out such activity i give my sincere thanks to organizing chairperson dr sasi mawar associate professor college of nursing for her support and inspiration in conducting today's event i would like to thank dr l gopichandran associate professor college of nursing aims for his words of wisdom and motivation i acknowledge the faculty college of nursing for their encouragement and moral support i thank our energetic and enthusiastic organizer ms cecilia cecilia mary and associate professor and uh, ms manita dalal tutor for taking interest and bracing the team i am also grateful to the staff of set facility for their technical assistance and support i must appreciate our post basic second year student for their untiring efforts in organizing today's event i would i would like to take this opportunity to place on record my hearty thanks to all the participants who made this function possible thank you all thank you babita ma'am for the vote of thanks uh now we'll have a tea break and afterwards we'll start with our first session i hope all of you have filled that uh, pre test forms okay vote of thanks Thank you, ma'am, for accepting the token. Thank you, sir, for accepting this token of appreciation. Thank you, Cecilia, ma'am.
Thank you, Manita, man, for accepting this token of love. Thank you, Babita, ma'am. We automate in our daily life. Uh, right from you know uh, pressing a button door open sensor is there it does the function does that mean it is functioning in uh, a level what is expected in artificial intelligence or deep neural network no that's quite different so what is the difference between uh, automation and uh, artificial intelligence first let us understand a situation where there is a light bulb when you get into your office or a room uh, you need to uh, switch on the light Manually, what we do, we get into the room, switch on the light, and it uh, uh, it it is switched on. And when you uh, finish your work, you are going out. You switch off the light. That's a manual operation. That's what we normally do. What happens in automation is that you configure the light in such a way that at particular time of the day, for example, if you enter the office at nine o'clock in the morning, it should switch it switch on at nine o'clock, and by five o'clock, it should switch. It should get switched off, except in uh, maybe you know holidays and all those things. So this is automation. Here we are feeding something into the system in the light bulb that this is the timing and this is how it should operate, and and this is how a normal automation would look like. But what are the what are the issues here? The light bulb is not intelligent. It is not going to recognize you when you enter the office. It's not going to uh, recognize you. It will depend on the pre-configured notion that when you get into the office at nine o'clock, it will get switched on. Whether you are there or not, maybe you are sick. You are you are not entered the office, but it will function on its own. So that is a pre-configured uh, this thing. We have to program it in that way that these are the rules which it should follow. Right? This is automation. So what is artificial intelligence then? How is it different from automation? Here, for first few days, light will look at you. Okay, okay, you are entering at nine o'clock. You don't come on Saturdays. You don't come on Sundays, and you take a lot of leave. So it can analyze these things. Okay, he is not uh, very punctual in his uh, office timings and all. So it will look at your pattern, and over a period of time, it can build an algorithm or build a timing that this is when he is going to reach the office. This is when he is going to most likely exit the office. So, without configuring anything, by just noticing what is happening over a period of time, by taking inputs from the way we uh, get into the office or whatever, so it learns over a period of time. Like any human being or any child, you know, it the brain learns something over a period of time, right? This is this is deep neural network. So, this is quite different from automation. Automation is Robot, robotics, and sensor-based technology, which are pre-configured things. All right. So, what is the definition of AI? AI is a technique which enables the computers to mimic human intelligence. This terminology is not a new terminology. This has been there since 1956. But at that point of time, it was just a terminology, and there was not much of computational or uh, algorithm powered, uh, which was not able to function in a way current. Uh, Algorithms function. Okay, again, little bit of history uh, about why and how it evolved over a period of time. Let us look at this. Uh, okay, all right. So let us look at this first photograph. Uh, this is a match or a Chinese checkers. It's again a match between a computer, which is very old computer. You know, nineteen ninety two. You can imagine what's the state of and power, computational power of that computer. It was in 1992, and the computer was playing with uh, Marion Tinsley. He's supposed to be a big expert in uh, that particular uh, game, and at the time Chinook lost to that person by four two. It won twice, and uh, the human uh, Marion Tinsley won four times. And similar thing happened in 1997, uh, and the match was between 
it was a chess match and match was between Gary Kasparov and Deep Blue. Deep Blue is a computer algorithm which was developed by IBM at that time. Gary Kasparov was a well-known uh, chess player and he is absolutely uh, an expert in that. But still, uh, Deep Blue was able to beat him in the margin of 3.5 to 2.5 which is a very big thing in you know at that point of 1997 if a computer can beat an expert chess player it's a big thing but even then the we are not able to accept that computers are performing better than human one can easily argue that this is such a computational power chess game is all about computational power okay these are the multiple number of options you have choose the best option so computers can store a lot of data, it can compute multiple parameters at a particular point of time. So it's not a big thing, it is just calculation. There is nothing intelligence, there is nothing intelligent about this pro process. So it was not, uh, you know, the, the artificial intelligence was not a big thing and it was not picking up at that time. In 2016, there is a game called AlphaGo. Go, Go is a game and AlphaGo is a tournament. I don't know how to play but I what I understood that for each move in that particular game there are 10 to the power 360 possibilities how can possibly a computer algorithm can put into perspective of this 10 into 10 to the power 360 moves that's that's for each and every move that's more than the number of probably atoms in in uh, earth so that's a number of possibilities that game has so without intelligence or without any proper approach, no one can play that game. And a match held between two, the Alpha Go, that's the, that's the uh, algorithm actually. And uh, Lee Sedol, he's still there and he's, he's a very uh, well-known uh, Go player. And Alpha Go won four times and he was able to one, one, win only one time against the uh, computer or the algorithm. Even that one was a tricky game and he was losing the game. But he made a very different uh, game plan and uh, and computer was trapped at that particular point. That's a different uh, aspect about it. But the important take home point here is the algorithm has evolved over a period of time. And now it is able to make decisions which a normal human would uh, take multiple number of possibilities 10 to, to, the power, to, to the power 360 is huge number of possibilities right and this is when people seriously took that yeah AI is thinking it is intelligent it is going to play a bigger role in the future all right so in AI especially deep learning or using any neural networks deep learning is uh, the current uh, area of interest it is it 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 made all the difference in the evolution of AI so between Chinu, between Deep Blue, uh, sorry, Deep Blue, and those two things are not deep learning methods, but AlphaGo was a deep learning algorithm. So the power of deep learning, all those are artificial intelligence-based technologies, but the deep learning was very powerful, and and that made all the difference in the evolution of AI. And it is considered as a disruptive technology, like electricity was introduced or internet was there introduced. No one would have thought that this would change the world and 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 this is the technology which is potentially very similar to that and the difference between the older technology and the new uh, artificial energy technology is that you don't need to explicitly code no one can code 10 to the power 360 possibilities right you cannot possibly do that so there is no need to code for anything computer or the algorithm learns on its own based on the inputs given and that's how it uh, learns and that is the reason for example, if you code something, if you format a rule to function uh, for any, whenever it is calculator or a computer, once the code is ready, computer functions from day zero. There is no need to need for the computer to learn because it is already coded. But artificial uh, intelligence using deep learning functions in a different way. It first learns for a long period of time. It is very similar to human. Child cannot. Uh, do something straight away right it learns over a period of time it trains himself what is right what is wrong how to you know manipulate things how to you know uh, do things so over a period of time it functions the sim similar way or a learns so that's the reason 
any artificial intelligence deep learning algorithms need lot of data and it takes it takes longer time to learn and be ready to do the job all right so another example uh, is called imagenet this is a website uh, available on the internet and this is nothing but a collection of crowd sourced photographs and uh, they used to conduct uh, this competition a challenge wherein anybody can participate and try to sort out those photographs in a particular classification scheme these are animals these are humans these are you know some articles these are photographs of chair table or what this is a kind of classification uh, thing the computer should do by sorting out those huge number of database available in imagenet so till 2000 uh, sometime around 2011 the error in classification was up to 25% one out of four was classified wrong by computers in 2012 that's that's the uh, uh, year where drastic change happened the error rate of 25% it fall fell down to 16% 16 or something the reason is that was the first time when someone used the deep learning algorithm before that it was all machine learning or you know rule based algorithms and in 2012 the alexa net or alexnet sorry that's that's that made a big difference in reducing the error and this is one landmark uh, event which uh, diverted all the attention towards deep learning before that there was there was no concept of deep learning and no one was able to uh, okay no one was able to harness that potential of uh, deep learning but in 2002 they they demonstrated that the future is uh, uh, deep learning okay let's clarify the terminologies here artificial intelligence is a broad umbrella terminology it includes multiple things so within artificial intelligence there is something called machine learning this is a little sophisticated compared to the rest of the artificial intelligence algorithms and within machine learning there is a more sophisticated area which is called the deep learning uh, methods which includes cnn which is convoluted neural networks so basically these are neural networks it it functions very similar to our brain which we'll see it in a few slides later on so we have talked about a little bit but again i'll uh, uh, spend a little more time on this what is the difference between traditional ai algorithm and modern machine learning algorithms and neural networks like i said the older technologies uh were based on the pre configured rules let's take an example here if you say that uh, x is equal to 1 and you have to tell the rule also that y is equal to x into 2 then you when you ask the computer how much is y then it can if x is equal to 1 and how much is y computer can tell you it is 2 and if you say x is equal to 2 computer can say it is 4 because you have given the formula to the computer that this is how the rule works right this is traditional machine learning the, the traditional computation of computers but here in the uh, right side figure what happens here is you provide the data x equal to 1 and you also give the answer that y is equal to 2 now you figure out what is the relationship so you give the data and the output and rest computer has to learn from it so this is a very basic explanation of how neural networks function you don't teach the computer you don't you don't you don't give the formula to the computer you give the input and the output computer or the algorithm figures out on its own that what is the relationship between these two things and that is uh, that's that's the training part of it so as i told you in traditional machine learning there is no need to no need for data to train because you are giving the formula there is no need to train and it takes very less time it it performance is perfect from the day one but if you look at the graph here any traditional machine learning algorithm will be good from from the point zero but it reaches a plateau here after that it won't get better because the formula is the computer is as good as a formula the, the process is as good as the formula you gave but in deep learning uh, uh, methods what happens it starts slow in the initial days it will do lot of errors and things like that and over a period of time once it learns it climbs up and it 
outperforms all the machine uh, traditional machine learning algorithms and it can perform much better because it keeps on learning uh, based on the mistakes and inputs we give current utility you know we are all using it every day there is no part of our mobile which is probably not ai camera is ai everywhere you go it is ai uh, whether it is there or not they'll market it as ai so it is everywhere right from google right from uh, facebook suggestions youtube suggestions twitter everywhere there is algorithm marketing advertisement is again takes a lot of uh, uh, technologies from ai google lens gmail text prediction you can suggest you to type a letter also you if you reply to a email it will say that yes whatever the suggestions can be given by the gmail it's all based on artificial intelligence handwriting recognition speech recognition and currently the buzz here is chat gpt no one would have thought that chat gpt can an algorithm can create a uh, essay if you tell chat chat gpt that write an essay with 100 or 1000 sorry 1000 words with references in 2 3 seconds it will give you that uh, uh, and you won't even yeah they say and you won't even realize that this is written by computer right that it the flow of the uh, uh, the flow of the essay or even the way uh, writes generates the words it's very uh, impressive and it it's very difficult to differentiate whether this is done by computer or actual human so that's the uh, current utility security surveillance it's all happening in uh, uh, that era i mean that domain also so benefits why should we move to artificial intelligence if human can if it is equal to human it it can perform equal to human why should we choose uh, artificial intelligence over human the thing is it can function 24/7 with the same efficiency there is no need to sleep humans need you know 9 to 5 no i am done i cannot do any more of this so but computers can function uh, without any problem uniformity across all devices so in a department there are there are five let's say radiologists five radiologists can be equal in all aspects there will be you know somebody must be better than me so it all, it all happens so so the homogeneity is not there the uniformity is not there whereas gmail or facebook or youtube has uniformity everywhere whatever device you use computer or or mobile or anything there is uniformity because it's all controlled by the server if the server is good all the clients will function in a very uniform manner and knowledge transfer is the key over a period of time what we do we learn many things at 50 55 we reach the uh, peak of our career and you get retired and after that it's how to transfer that knowledge we what we do is we generally teach and uh, try to you know convey the message but it's very difficult to convey something which is called gut feeling ye dekh aise lagta hai it's very difficult in radiology is a specialty where we most of them we say that no no ye aise hi lagta hai it is gut feeling so how do you transform or convert that into a text or a thing which can be understood by the student it's very difficult so student has to again learn from scratch and develop over a period of time and reach a, a level of knowledge like the a teacher so there is no a proper way to convey or transfer our knowledge uh, in the exact same manner to the student if that was possible there is no need for college or uh, anything just pen drive put a pen drive and transfer the data will, but unfortunately that's not how we function and that's the benefit of ai knowledge transfer happens seamlessly it can be transferred to any number of devices any number of uh, things without any problem updates can be rolled out instantly you know if you want to update the human population uh, you know if you want to make them aware of if, for example covid you have to conduct conferences you have to conduct multiple uh, gatherings like this to make the human population understand this is what is going on learn these things update doesn't take that just server switch updates are sent to all the uh, uh, thing it happens over a you know for a, a, a minimum time frame and they get better and better and like us you know we we reach a particular point and we just and decline starts so but they, they get better and better 
So coming to the medical part of it, now we have spent a lot of time over the technology, history and everything, but what is happening in medi <coughs> medicine? <coughs> like 10 years back or 7-8 years back, so if someone asked me that can machine diagnose a finding on x-ray or diagnose something on, uh, on a clinical data, I would have thought, no, it's not possible. Because we strongly believe that there is something called medical intuition. Medical intuition is something uh, which is not based on lab values, like, you know, less than 13 is anemia, more than 1.2 is uh, abnormal creatinine. So that is not intuition. Intuition is something, if you look at a patient or if you look at an X-ray, if you look at a CT, you have some knowledge of patient's history, syndrome or family history, or you collate <coughs> multiple things and you come to a conclusion. It's a very complex process which works in our mind. That's, that is that is the learning process of any uh, discipline. This we call as menti medical intuition. Students can ask you why no, why not this is something else. Then we say that no, no, this is this, I know, this is a gut feeling or medical intuition. So that particular complex process is called medical intuition. We never thought computers can replace it. How can a computer can uh, collate multiple things? That's That was our the thing. But if you look at our brain, a doctor's brain or any, 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 anybody's brain, it works very similar to a neural network. Initially, we spend a lot of time in learning. In the residency period, you get a lot of learning. Even in your uh, uh, student period, you get a lot of things to learn. And over a period of time, you learn and, and reach a level to diagnose and do things. Artificial intelligence exactly does process. It, it exactly do things the same way. All right. So this is the neural network, multiple nodes are there, multiple neurons are connected to the nodes and depending on, that is how, how a decision is made on an, in, a, in a human brain, depending on what number of neurons fire and what number of, you know, what is the weightage that is given and finally that is how a decision is made, AI performs very similar to that. There are multiple nodes, multiple steps to come to a decision. And uh, and that's the reason why it is called neural network because multiple nodes are connected to each other in a very complicated manner, and that's the reason it is called as a neural network. Areas of medicine where A is helping is there is a long list. This is not a not even a part of it. It's a small list, but but actual uh, change is happening in a lot of uh, areas. Another landmark paper which again gave a big push to uh, AI in medicine is that which was published in uh, Nature uh, in 2018. This was I think done by Google and uh, uh, sorry. So lack of artificial intelligence because mobile didn't know that I am giving a talk. So sorry for that. Anyway, so what they did they collected multiple fundoscopy, fundoscopic images and they trained the computer algorithm and their initial thing was to say, uh, diagnose what is the type of diabetic retinopathy, what is the grade of diabetic retinopathy, that was their initial because doctor looks at uh, the um, fundoscopy image and comes to a conclusion this is grade 1, grade 2 or grade 3, that's what they wanted to do it with artificial intelligence or deep learning network. Eventually what it uh, how it evolved was, it was able to classify, like uh, doctors do, like ophthalmologists do, it was able to classify. Apart from that, it was able to guess the age of the patient. In You know, the error is around 3.2 years, that's the error. It was able to, just by looking at the fundoscopic image, it can tell you the age, what sex, gender of the patient, BP and the smoking status. So these things, even we cannot... Uh, Say, how can you uh, say that this is a female patient or a male patient just by looking at the fundoscopic process? It's not possible. So we don't know what it looked at in the fundoscopy. We don't know what uh, what made it to think that this is male or female, but it was able to figure out because we didn't. I mean, if had if we had uh, given a formula, we would obviously give something what we know. You have to look at this. You have to look at this. And this. But this is the beauty of training. Give a open freedom to the. Uh, computer, it learns on its own, it will make mistakes obviously and over a period of time, it found out or it diagnosed things 
which even we cannot diagnose. So that's the uh, beauty of uh, artificial intelligence algorithms. Another example, um, this particular algorithm was trained to diagnose carcinoma in, uh, these, are these are mammograms and in the breast uh, uh, to, to diagnose breast lesions or breast cancers and it performed uh, better than six radiologists and uh, that's the findings which was published in the study it was better it, it performed better than a radiologist but one example they cited was this two images these two things were taken at four years apart and the diagnosis were made but at the second image and the first image the diagnosis was missed by the human radiologist it's a tiny lesion, very tiny lesion. I don't even know whether it is projecting or not. It's a tiny lesion. But the AI was able to say that this is a high risk lesion even on the first image. So this is an I know, isolated example. We cannot say that AI can uh, perform uh, you know, miracles, but it is an example that AI can perform at least equal to our, uh, our ability. <coughs> These are few things which even we use in our department uh, uh, to find or estimate the bone age. Initially, when earlier we used to look at an atlas to uh, match the appearance and calculate the bone age, it takes 15 to 20 minutes for a single x-ray to come up, come to a diagnosis. But uh, uh, artificial intelligence based technologies can do it in seconds. So that's a lot of workflow improvement. We also in our department, uh, one of our colleague did a lot of uh, work on uh, COVID positive x-rays using uh, deep learning algorithm. I'll not go in, into the details of it. Yeah, this is what this was a result of that uh, algorithm. It was able to highlight areas. These are uh, heat maps where the algorithm is trying to show you that this is the area of the abnormality. And it was able to pick up multiple abnormalities. One curious thing was that in some few patients, uh, how much time I have? Five minutes. Okay. Ten minutes. Okay. All right. So, uh, I think this is. Better. In some radiographs, it pointed out this area. This is not the area of lung. This is the area of the heart and and, and we uh, gave x-rays of COVID patients and it was supposed to find out what is the problem in the lung, right? But it kept on pointing out this area in few x-rays. Later on, we realized that uh, these are the patients who underwent, who, who were, uh, uh, who actually had cardiac failure. You know, it, it, it Corona or COVID can affect the heart also. It can cause myocarditis and eventually cardiac failure. And these are the patients who had developed cardiac issues because of COVID. So, you know, we don't know for sure whether that's what it looked for. We don't know for sure. But it was able to point out something in that area which is abnormal, which we didn't think that it was abnormal. So that's okay. Um, types of ML algorithms, I'll not go into the details of it. There are, these are the um, uh, broad classification of um, uh, neural network or, or, or uh, AI technologies, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised and reinforcement learning. Broadly, what it is that supervised learning is nothing but you give the input data as well as the gold standard for a few uh, number of iterations. And after that, it will uh, be able to understand and learn and it can take the uh, decision. Unsupervised learning is that you don't give any gold standard. You dump 10,000 images to the algorithm, let it learn on its own and figure out how to classify those uh, example uh, images. That's unsupervised learning. Semi-supervised is hybrid of these two things. You know, partly uh, trained with gold standard and partly not trained with gold standard. Reinforcement learning is something which machine learns with some errors. For example, if it is a Pac-Man game, so it will try to catch that, uh, I don't know what is that, that yellow thing. So if it can catch, there, there is reinforcement. Yeah, I did the good thing. If it is not, if it is bumping into the wall or something, it will realize that no, this is not uh, right. So over a period of time with this kind of reinforcement, the outcome reinforces 
uh, into the uh, algorithm itself and it, it and it learns how to do the process in the correct way that's uh, uh, so i'll skip this slide it's a little complex it's nothing but the same so this is an example of supervised learning why i'm highlighting this is that this is how most of the radiology uh, ai methods are being done you give the input training data into the deep learning model the deep learning model will try to calculate something whether it is right or not initial period it will calculate something and it will show the output the output will be matched with the label ground truth there is a ground truth also here we give the ground truth also what if if i give an x-ray and it will say that this is abnormal if i say that no no this is normal x-ray okay another x-ray so this is the iteration which goes on on so with this ground truth whatever the decision it was made by the algorithm is fine-tuned that's the error loss function or something so when you keep on doing this multiple times the algorithm uh, learns on its own and so this is a graphic to show how and this is a letter 9 this is a numerical letter 9 and uh, how that is broken into multiple pixels fed into the uh, initial first input nodes and those are transferred to subsequent nodes you know multiple pixels and these nodes calculate and take decisions depending on the relationship of those pixels what is the relationship how it was like that it is very complex and we cannot understand how it uh, uh, analyzes it but eventually but by crossing multiple filters or nodes it can eventually say that this is just that this is number nine and this works in our mobile also you know handwriting recognition is there in our mobile phones also and it performs and works in this way okay how good are these images they are all perfectly good looking fine looking images but these are all not original images they are all developed by or created by AI algorithms it's very difficult to say that these are all fake images right so what is the role of creating fake images in radiology how these fake images are being created there is something called GAN generative adversarial network something generates a particular image adversarial network will challenge it no this is a fake image so there will be two servers working against each other one server will create an image let's say uh, an x-ray of chest the other discriminative network or the challenging network will say that no no this is a fake image this is this is not an original image this you have created so the fight between these two servers happens over a period of time and at a certain point the generative server can generate such an image that the discriminative server cannot say that that is fake or real so that's that's how it uh, functions and these are all uh, GAN uh, uh, generated images so what is the role of these images in radiology one is that in the rare cases it's very difficult to get so so many number of cases so that teaching suffers so what GAN can do is that generate uh, for example if i need a x-ray of a very rare uh, case i can generate it and it can, can be a, a teaching uh, uh, thing also and at the same time if you have a ct scan of a patient you can generate mr images these are actually generated images these are not normal those are not real mr images these are generated Im images from ct so if a patient has ct use a ct image to create mr the other way around also is possible if a patient has mr why to put the patient to another radiation uh, modality so ct can be created based on that i'll skip this this is not something uh, these are few things which we have worked on but i'll skip in the interest of time these are few algorithms and something which we had uh, developed in in collaboration with iit delhi and uh, that's what it is so let's come to the we have talked about AI quite a bit and, and we have said that AI is superpower and it's going to replace and which it's it's the best thing in the world. But not like that. It, it's not the message I want to give you. But eventually, whatever happens within this network or within this uh, layer of networks is actually a black box. We don't know why AI algorithm made a decision. We don't know why right it is it is a black box uh, or opaque box we don't know for what reason it made that decision you gave an x-ray which looked normal to me 
but it said it is abnormal why we don't know in human uh, learning what happens if a student asks me that why you are saying this is a normal abnormal x-ray i can still say that this is the abnormality and this is what made me to say that this is normal or abnormal but it it is not still possible in uh, ai you have to blindly agree to it yeah yeah, yeah. whatever computer says is right we'll agree but there are now few approaches which can decode to some extent why this is being done but it is not completely uh, known to us that why what triggered the machine to decide on something what it did we don't know the reason behind it okay and is there a is there a reason why should why we should know why that machine take that decision definitely it is important we cannot blindly take the decision of the computer and implement it for example surgeon cannot operate the operate on a patient uh, because ai said so it is it is not uh, possible at least as of now so we need to understand the logic behind it why it took that decision so once you know the logic behind it we can act on that decision and it is also possible if you know why it took a decision like that we can probably help the ai to say that no these are the areas where you are not uh, doing well and you can improve on it so that is also important for example even even sometimes we can learn things from uh, ai if you know why it made a decision go well, see there is a dark area here and that's the reason why it took this decision so okay maybe we can also learn based on that okay till now we are not focusing on that area but now we'll focus on it ai algorithms can horribly go wrong for example this happened in uh, new zealand few years back when there was a terrorist attack and and it was being live stream and facebook had ai and all those things but still was not able to block or take it down in a particular period of time so ai can uh, be sometimes uh, error prone all right okay again it's this we have discussed you cannot follow the ai blindly it is prone to errors there are good things about ai there is no doubt in future it will be there it will give us lot of support but you cannot blindly uh, 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 you know accept what uh, ai decides on it and other thing is what something goes wrong if i made a mistake on chest x ray or a ct i am responsible right but what have what what happens if ai makes a mistake who is responsible right the, the creator of ai the company who markets it who is responsible for that there is no uh, clarity on that at least for that reason radiologists will be there because you need someone to blame right so so we are safe in that way and a can be the data which is given to a can be misused in multiple ways we generally think that we search we use uh, the search engine to search the world in reality what happens is the actual search engine is actually searching your information it's it gets lot of information and uh, so data can be used in not so good ways that's that's one thing and another reason i can tell you that can you board a flight autopilot in a flight is good enough even currently autopilot in a flight is good enough to take take off and land it can uh, take you safely to front place to another place can you board a flight which is purely run by autopilot i don't think so it is still not uh, uh, possible to accept that although it is capable but but you know there is something which we we cannot uh, accept and again legality standards benchmarking it's all multiple things are there which still not very clear that how it should be used who is responsible and all those things so i think last two slides uh, it is it has shown potential there is definitely there is no doubt that it is it has lot of potential but how to use it to our advantage is not a clear that is probably it will evolve in a, over a period of time in few years from now so generally people ask uh, they have these questions whether ai will replace our job especially radiologists so you know what we do we sit idle and we look at images and we don't uh, you know we don't do much of physical work like others do we just sit at a monitor and we do so it can be easily replaced you know if what if machine can diagnose x ray and, and our job is gone but generally there are three uh things you can look at it in three perspectives a can be considered as autonomous intelligence we can say that is supreme we are slave ai is supreme 
and let us accept whatever it says, we will follow it. That is one method of looking at it. The other method is assistive intelligence. We see that, no, no, I am the boss. It can only do things like bring me water, bring me, arrange do things, switch on the light, but it cannot, uh, it can only work as a slave to me. It cannot perform equal or better than me. So that's one way of looking at it. But there is a third approach, which is a mid approach or hybrid approach called augmented intelligence. What it means that we accept that we have our uh, strength is logical reasoning. Whatever decision we make, whatever we think, we have something in our brain with which we can explain things. Why did I did this thing? But AI, the, the strength of AI is in computation. The computation uh, ability of computer, we can't even match our computational ability with even a calculator. Calculator does things in a fraction of a second. So we cannot match our computational ability with a computer. But the reasoning ability is much better, at least as of now. So these two things are different. So we need to harness these two things. So we can augment our ability by utilizing the or harnessing the benefits of AI. So that is called as augmented intelligence. We are doing okay, doing good, but let's use the power of AI also. That's a third approach. I would vouch for this third approach because this is probably the most feasible method and most likely scenario in next few years or from some time from now. So to conclude, AI is exploding with the innovations every year, every, I mean, if you look at the PubMed or even publications, it's all filled with AI. Uh, even if you are subscribed to Google, by now Google would have, would, would be sending you alerts that your AI generated images of various individuals, uh, kings of different states you must have seen all those things. So it is, it is clearly buzzing uh, term now. It is everywhere. And it is important for us to know what it is, what are the things we can benefit from it, and what are the things we need to be careful of. So this is very important. Data is the basic requirement of AI. All said and done, we have large amount of data in our hospital, but still they are not properly curated. And if you can curate it properly, if you can collect 1 lakh data, data points of a particular thing, even if it is, you know, kidney size and creatinine or kidney size and something, it can, it's, it's a very helpful data. So that's the reason why all big companies, Google, Facebook, they are all looking for data. Why Google is free? Why Google search engine is free? You know, they run a lot of servers, they run a lot of data centers all over the world. They must be spending a lot on employees and, and, and uh, uh, the manpower. Why is it free? The reason is they get a lot of data. Uh, we must be thinking that we are spending a lot of time on YouTube. We are watching free, but uh, nothing to blame Google or anything, but that is how the model works. The number of data, data points, the number of inputs they get from the user, they use it to make the service better and better. So data is the basic requirement of AI. Without data, there cannot be a neural network. And uh, that, that's the reason you should think of a problem here, collect data meticulously. It's a tough process, but if you have collected a good data, it, it can be a worthwhile uh, thing and it can, it can, it can potentially create, a, uh, create an algorithm. Thank you. I think I overshot my time. I'm sorry for that. If any questions, I'll be happy to answer. I think nothing. <laughs> so thanks. Thanks for the passion listening and thanks for inviting me. And uh, thanks. Thank you, sir, for the detailed information at the same time making the topic at a format that is easy to understand and relate with the professional skills and knowledge. 
as he has uh, included me about machine learning about neural networks thank you sir now i uh, invite ms cecilia ma'am to give dr deva sir the memento as a sign of appreciation from us sir नाउ फॉर आर नेक्स्ट सेशन वी हैव विद अस डॉक्टर एल गोपी चंदन सर एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर कॉलेज ऑफ नर्सिंग एम्स he is a president of tnai branch delhi and he is also founder president of society of cardiac nurse india he has been honored with more than 20 international national and institutional awards most of her most of us are heard about duction to app yeah for the management of heart failure patients Dr Gopi Chandran has been instrumented in the development of this nurse led mobile app so uh, i welcome sir on dice sir thank you very much it's my pleasure over here um, i think yes sir i used to move <laughs> okay anyway we had actually a uh, seven days workshop then uh, the time dr sishlia was uh, deliberating about artificial intelligence so we conducted a uh, organized by tna delhi branch about informatic integration of informatic into the nursing practice At the time we have really had a, you know lot of uh, input uh, i think we invited many people and uh, from medical side and interact with nurses and uh, really that time we we realized that actually this is the need of the hour i should extend more i think that is the reason only she took this uh, uh, topic and after deva uh, talk i think nothing going to talk from my side more but still uh, you know uh, my focus most on the clinical decision making so it is a physician concerns but still the decision making at uh, you know at remote and the uh, area where the physician is uh, not exist not available and uh, how the ai can help and you know uh, especially early detection early diagnosis make the differences in the patient care outcome that's we everyone know that but india like country diverse country it's a very you know a very very difficult to reach the people even last week and i visited northeast i i felt it actually even we come to know how much the difficulty when during the covid uh, treatment vaccination to reach the people who are living in the you know very hills areas but if they are suffering with the diseases it's uh, what we expected to that you know early diagnosis of this kind of diseases uh, if not uh, you know diagnosed really it is burden to not only to the patient and to the family and to the community and again to the burden to the you know our government in terms of the expending so we should always say so one bird always uh, we whoever occupies occupy occupy the other bird that what the ancient people know that how much difficult to get the bird that's why uh, uh, what exactly uh, he highlighted that uh, ai is uh, definitely make our human intelligence uh, but it's make a lot of performance by understanding the concept i think last 30 minutes i hope everyone uh, realize that I, maybe you'd understand that what is machine learning deep learning and again uh, again a itself there is different supervised learning and supervised learning but finally he conclude that that what i expected he, he completely i was very much happy that time he said it is we need to understand that he support that augmented intelligent is the only one can perform better in the application of a in the medical or in the nursing that's what uh, i wanted to from this 30 minutes talk uh, you know from him to uh, uh, everyone to realize because a work in different different field with day to day our activities but something happen in the error same like pilot you know uh, we we auto driving even uh, it is happening in other countries because they use for the carrying the goods you understand not carrying the goods they carry this any kind of that they are accepting but human never boarded in this automated 
any kind of this. Sometimes they are using for labor, boarding and all, they are doing some of the companies still uh, people, passengers still they are not, uh, you know, accepting to go into that type of boarding. But sometimes we come to know that Metro is working in most of the time with, you know, without, you know, but we are not aware that we some to come to realize that it's, it's we are, the Metro is running without driver sometimes because it's in going one way, one track. But it, that's why we are still, we never find this type of problem. But if you going to the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the road where there is a different, uh, you know, uh, vehicles are coming, that time we find that some small error make the different, uh, you know, make the whole, uh, you know, things, uh, you know, uh, damage. So that's why we usually have that kind of thinking in your mind when you're using it. But think about the medical, you know, already we, uh, she mentioned that I'm very much, uh, you know, interested working in this area last, I think, almost three, four uh, year, I realized that when the patient came to uh, uh, diagnose the heart failure, uh, I used to, you know, uh, uh, you know, visit the patients when the students are posted, uh, that understood the complexity in nature of the disease, uh, because really we thought that disease means one, now it's a multiple comorbidities, yes or no, multiple comorbidities with the one patients, even with the heart failure, diabetes, hypertension, and they have with the endocrine problem, they have the renal compromise. So many things are there, one patient. But diagnosed is one single disease, multiple comments. So pay one patient itself, many specialized doctors require today. They refer to diabetes, they refer to the, you know, endocrine. So that much complexity in nature. So how we, we already in the shortage of the doctors, specialized doctors. Doctors is a shortage and specialized doctors, still a lot of shortage. Availability of this doctor existing in this peripheral level hospitals very less and they don't want to practice that area. So still nurses are doing well today. They are very good in terms of knowledge and everything still we are also have shortage. And again working in the clinical setup, lot of you know, uh, again the workflow, I, I am able to see that you know nurses, we every time expected to perform but when they take you know performing some kind of work. They finish the duty. Sometimes, most of the time, we occupied with so many writings, documentations. That's why informatics came, helped you, supported you, so many things. And still, but all are related to the workflow we are managing, reporting we are managing, document we are managing, definitely no doubt about it. Now, informatics integration, nursing practice or medical practice, good enough to manage our workflow and also producing that, you know, kind of reducing the error, all the things. But how you make the differences in terms of our workflow and again depends on the patient care outcome. That is the most, most important because same I, earlier I had it the same thing, early diagnosis, early management. When the patient comes to emergency, because of your workload, because of non-availability of staff, the management is, you know, delayed, the patient is death or patient is that come to the worst outcome. The AA is doing well, that the benefit of AA, we are able to do that. That is what the, you know, the integration of this the pra practices, which you want to enable it. So this understanding by the doctor alone, Dr. Deva is a radiologist working in, uh, you know, with, uh, with IAT Delhi, so many projects, so many things, because he is imaging, you know, he's doing radiology, he wanted to, you know, especially COVID, they will utilize this, the AA, because 100 film come, you understand, one radiology available, they cannot do, make it screen, bring back to them, they will diagnose, then start the treatment as much earlier possible. That way they were used that AI in this term summit. But for us, for nurses, are we utilizing, are we sensitizing ourselves how the AI is helping us? This is the one need of the our thing. This forum is uh, definitely, either I, we did last, uh, you know, seven days workshop, two months before, that also we sensitized nurses. Delhi nurses mostly we covered. But today this workshop also, the outcome is after end of this workshop, you should sensitize what the AI is doing at medical and nursing what I expected to do that. Again, what I can do, because what is happening in nursing, uh, I'm talking sometimes as a, 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 you know, as a resource speaker, sometimes TNA president also. <laughs> Why I'm telling, because what I expected you to perform, please think beyond that, because what nursing is going, expected to overcome or maybe want to empower better than other or par with the medical professional, we need innovation. We need creative thinking. You know, I know all youngsters are very good. But how you have to prove it by the, the things what you are trying to understand to make it differences, but what today other medical faculty doing. That's why we did it, our even our department, whenever we use, we're trying to use the difference. We're trying to use it. When we did it with the heart failure app also, we did it. I understood that time patient has come from BGAR, discharge. There is no connection between the patient and the 
doctors and there is no connection between the patient and the you know they are very poor they are you know they are coolies 500 rupees they are you know uh, they cannot able to they are taking lot of money from borrowing families and come for the railway even railway concession they are giving for only patients from sometime you know for the for the family members that also they are waiting big queues they are suffering lot but how they can be connected then we understood that everyone using technology mobile everything how we can able to give create this type of app again app with the artificial intelligence machine learning what we did it actually everyone using the mobile app we wanted to you know give kind of you know we did it with the machine learning if the bp is increasing you know that may be more than 10 percentage the weight is increasing more than 2 kg it give automatic alarm to the family member i mean to the doctor also to the nurse heart failure nurse also we have the position of heart failure nurses why nurses working 24 to 7 so they also get the alarm and patient also will be alerted because they must know that again i also one of the very good future in this app is we know lb we left you know uh, bundle branch block is very common among this patient who are suffering with heart failure even we go to the even physician nearby they cannot able to read that uh, ecg i know that they are mbbs still they are not very much competent so this app capture and they able to uh, you know uh, diagnose that lbb that type of future we have what is the advantages lbb immediately the patient patient go into the cardiogenic shock need to revive immediately they have to be admitted soon they need to refer to the doctor that type of giving alarm is given the future that's what he told we put more than 400 500 lbb you know ecg we were data we entered we tested 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 still it is sometimes showing error we are able to achieve it because how many time you know it's a long running only that app will be going to perform very well that's what the algorithm we trying to do that so we uh, that way that is app was good enough to today performing and same aspect we did in palliative also we did it palliative now my student phd in nursing to you know who is our nursing officer she is got the opportunity to enter into phd full time her name is pail this is what to inform you to motivate you because you know you think that uh, nursing officer i am working at the clinical my career will be going to ended as clinical nurse so they do master they do doctorate even aims to have the master doctorate level programs she is doing artificial intelligence with the palliative management you know earlier we thought that is a patient need to educate that we never educated individualized education yes or no patient suffering with a different disease we educate generally we put one uh, you know during msc requirement bsc just one prepare one chart you give general education we never ask what is your problems and in terms of drugs what you are taking or the, you are suffering with the diabetic or hypertension whatever it is you need to understand the patients first they learning needs and problem then you give education but now this app will give you know whenever you are entering the example the patient have pain score is there it give more information on the pain automatically automation is there in the app the patient is vomiting example 3 days the patient is getting vomiting due to the chemotherapy the give automatically they give information on vomiting what you are supposed to do this type of app is created and it's kind of education but still artificial intelligence in the education that's why with that i just go into the topic more on but she cover so many areas i just to be quickly i go into that because i am not going to use more pictorial he, he already used but now uh, with that how uh, you know uh, that my sessions how the clinical decision support can be done by ai especially in the communities and uh, especially in the emergency critical care unit it is not only for the uh, you know for the medical application the medicines and also in the nursing also that again you have a lot of discussion from other faculty about nursing in a but still i'll give overall view on that so uh, we understood the healthcare is ongoing never ended that's why we need lot of you know evolution is happening in the you know terms of medicines the technology evolution also how it's helping in the in the medicines the, i mean in the healthcare system everyone know that finally we are in the ma managing all in the healthcare record yes or no i am, I am a healthcare electronic health record that was today is everyone come to the uniformity that way we are able to cover universal health coverage universal health coverage not only you are servicing covering the whole uh, you know health of among whole world and also you know the data of everybody that's what the overall idea that bring it to know you can able to predict you can evaluate the mortality and morbidity and you can understand the health need of everyone that's what the overall objective but is the base what he told whatever today happening in ai in technology in healthcare the base is the data yes on no? the base is the data yearly we don't have any data now we are able to generate the data 
that aims i can say very pioneer in this area because first in nurse informatic full fledged system is happen at aims that's why we are very proud we started this ehr the ehr will help us to know to diagnose classify today international classification of disease icd 10 all are now feeded now nanda is that classified i think everyone about nanda still we do lot of error eh? when you are doing diagnosis but now when you go to other country us they have nanda is in the data so automatically it will able to predict and able to classify and lay out also what diagnosis the patient is landing on that so uh, this way this is uh, understand that we we are earlier we keep all kind of data in the uh, you know records all in one warehouse nowadays we all keep it in the uh, you know in the Uh, in the as a data storage in the server and everywhere so here you can see that uh, uh, you know we overall we expected that every every things what you are trying to do is outcome improvement yes or no patient care outcome and also we want to you know better experience but satisfy the patient is not uh, easy whatever even today we always face challenges yes or no every time that's why it's happening unwanted experience happening in the emergency in the you know and the critical care, wherever you come to know this all happening because you are not able to satisfy they always expect the best outcome best you know result but not possible due to the shortages due to that you know nurses or doctors and because of overload and it's happened like yesterday you have happened in turkey yes or no you have number of patients we are many countries are flying over there carrying the i mean drugs and the manpower to serve these people that much huge situations they how we depend on this type of artificial intelligence and uh, making the differences in terms of the patient care outcome i just want to show you some of the things i think it's all uh, slide already covered that's why i don't want to bring it to the more on this covid we realize that uh, how much it is used that time only that is the that made thing earlier before i told the you know online learning we never think about it before that much now after the covid we become like culture now even though during covid we used now become culture part of it but we understood wherever the gap is there we utilize, utilize that online meeting online same like ai also we know that ai was doing well but not into the practice they had that gap it was there whether we can use it or not that what we are thinking because error happen what will happen to the patient that's why they were lacune that time but they took bold decision at that time i am of covid because of screening because of do early screening because of early diagnosis or especially in the image concerns or radiology concern laboratory concerns they want automation decisions they done into the, that's why they went to the ai but now it's become practice i'm very proud to say that everywhere now they are using the ai for the clinical decision support so come to ai decision disease detection and diagnosis that is a more important uh, you know uh, advantage for you uh, for in terms of the application of in the clinical decision uh, making i think you are one of the uh, you know participant here mr matthew he is uh, working in this uh, early detection of cancers and for the screening out i know how much he has the challenges he faced because the manpower even we discussed recently with just now with him so we have to prepare some of the trainer you know to do for mass detection of this so mass detection you want mass screening you want to do you need major major number but the training is not easy yes or no manpower training is not easy a lot of capacity building is very challenging always so for the technology use the technology how i was wonder when i went for i my app was selected for the commonwealth uh, you know award in the colombo when i was went there uh, i think 3 4 years i met one of the amiti person who is from community medicine so he he came with a you know presentation he used that uh, you know mobile phone simply take the mobile phone take the picture from went to the oral cancer patients who are there in different places and he was the he was sitting loading loading all the oral cancer he is trying to you know able to detect uh, you know uh, yearly diagnosis of the especially uh, pre lesions yes or no you know that uh, cancers uh, pre cancerous lesions that lesion he was able to detect and he was able to prove that how many patients was again mobilized for the for the further the screening they were also detected i think 30 to 40 percent you were able to detect that patient was suffering with this so that time he was very much uh, you know appreciated by the outcome. i think i think four or five years the 2016 i think uh, 17 uh, that has happened that time everybody amazed that oh this work is very great you know it's young uh, you know scientist is doing that type of work why what is the uh, you know relevant or i can say that uh, the work is very uh, you know significant they are appreciated because going to everyone home you know he uh, take that you know screening even he is a technologist even though he is community medicine i think 
even you cannot able to screen he is not trained that much how to screen that you know oral cancer patient you just take the picture you the technology and bring into the inter, uh, collaborate with the amity technology people he made it he loaded many you know same what he told uh, the cancerous lesions pre cancerous lesions with uh, you know many of the images he was able to matching out ai was matching up that time. it was machine learning only it's a machine it's not deep learning deep learning it make the own algorithm the machine learning we, he made trained that particular machine and do that it was seven years before. Now we are in the deep learning. It is more and more good because deep learning will give algorithm by own wherever there is a, you know, we are challenges we face. That type of, you know, concept came, but really appreciated. That time we realized that, okay, that time it's insight for me. It is really, I, I captured his, you know, thought. That's one of the advantages when you go to some conferences, we, you know, get some kind of insight. That time it's good, okay, something we have to make it. That idea only I, I was changing to the next time. What the LBB all I did it with that idea only because I wanted to be that sensitized today what you expected tomorrow to do that. So A deduction is A uh, in disease deduction. I expected what he's mentioned about uh, you know coronary vascular diseases. The patient with the retinopathy, yes or no? Uh, in a diabetic, then again they detected CVD risk. That type of things only we expected how the AA can help to detect early detection of the disease, early diagnosis of the patient yearly mobilization of the patient for further treatment that bring the change of the outcome yes or no this reduces up so much burden for not only the patient and that one and again it is new no need to depend on the you know human resources one or two enough for to screen for 200 300 patients that is a really good enough to do that again personalized tre uh, disease treatment the personalized means we know that earlier we never we may understood in the msc level you know, uh, patient centric, yes or no, community centric or family centric treatment, these and all. But everyone today doing that work, that only you improvise these many outcomes. That means if you want to say the patient is quality of life is good enough, that cannot do only by the treatment and drugs. How you able to, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, you know, interact with the patients, your communications, you know, you understand that everyone needs, uh, every individual needs. And again, the diagnosis, I told you, a lot of comorbidities, how the type of care or treatment you are giving to the patient. That's why personalized disease treatment is a huge task today. I was thinking earlier, we thought that multiple data will look into the, you know, the patient to know, to bring the algorithm for any kind of gold standard treatment. Nowadays, every patient have the unique, they have multiple data within the patients. It bring itself deep learning, itself bring into the algorithm. This patient needs this type of treatment. Understand everyone? This patient, even we are still confused about when you start the any inotropic drugs, when you start any, even physician stuff, you have a lot of difference in the treatment algorithm, treatment, you know, the protocols. Sometimes we will also know how to understand why this doctor write like this, this doctor like this. Then they itself, they have a lot of confusion in the treating the treatment. Sometimes they ignore some diagnosis, ignore some comorbidities, sometimes it's landing into some complication. In that perspective, today, AA, that's why argumented intelligence, AA bring into some decisions. And doctor can again to, you know, argument it means they have to again to uh, make sure that we are going into the right track or sometimes they can take concern from other physicians. Oh, okay, I'm doing this one, uh, but the AI is given something different output. Am I right or not? That type of, you know, because once something happened to the patient or outcome is poor or, you know, something, you know, uh, a complication developed, you cannot revert back. Yes or no? That's what we never always, we when we come to the medical practices or or maybe into the if the humans are involved, we are so much take decision on applying the AA. But if you are using AA for your mobile phone or opening the door or something which you do, we never think we take an immediately take into the decision, we'll use it. But when you come to the human, we are so much in taken to the because we making, we made this machine AA, but it is made damage as we never allow that. That's why they are very much in taken decision. But again, advantage of this AA is personalized disease statement that really even health education, I told you. The patient uh, we are using, vomiting is there, he is giving message on the vomiting, what is supposed to do, what you supposed to do. We already feed it, data feed it and is giving artificial. So that much we are able to use that called personalized disease treatment. Next is in medical imaging that he already mentioned. I don't want to repeat the same. It's really for the radiology concern, yeah, is so good. And even I, I, he was mentioned correctly, some rare diseases, even they are not able to do that diagnosis. The machine giving kind of that, you know, images for us to make the reference that way really good. And clinical trial efficiency, I told you, clinical trial means data. Data gives the results that by input and output, we all know that by default. But still the clinical trial, huge data collect from different, different, you know, sectors, 
very difficult for them to organize very difficult for them to give the result that's why a is giving already we feed it sometime machine learning we already have algorithm deep learning sometime we have new new insight or new diagnosis means a trial is happening we don't know how we are going to get the result that time the deep learning i a is more useful for the clinical trial approaches again accelerated drug development i think everyone know that antibiotic is resistant develop we don't know what we are supposed to know what supposed to go into the next level antibiotic so same like using different drugs today we are looking into next level even either whatever in anti coagulation whatever we can think in consideration today evolution happening in type of many medications these all helping for that in the a is helping more good enough for drug development today pharmaceutical industry majorly depend on the drug development i think if you go into learn separately on the, the pharmaceutical industry application it's amazing but i just want telling today is the starting day for you really in tomorrow someone young people especially you know want to do so many thing in ai please start to work on so many iit is giving the you know for some courses on machine learning ai deep learning these all courses on data management and lot of opening for the nurses also that can be do well in this area and uh, accelerating and risk satisfaction that we already discussed by risk at the age factors yes or no comorbidities and lipid profile whatever it is give automatically uh, anyway i'll show you some picture for you still i just to summarize for you because of 30 minutes start just i to conclude yeah patient outcome optimization that is the most most important which you expected because every time even we didn't realize that whenever we do work even nurses earlier what is the difference between what today nurses or uh, a master level nurses i can see doctor level nurses working in the in a clinicals even bs nurses really who studied here or exposing like aims like institution they work with objectivities if you go to the other area they work i right, complete my duty and go yes or no i finished my work over but they are satisfied with their compassion so what they are spending with the time with the, you know timing early reporting at time and everything but they always feel inside that i am not improvising you know i am not at level with other people kind of guilty feeling will be there in the today generation especially they are very competitive more energetic they want to do they are stuck into this profession because of that i am not able to but today is a, you know i can say that lot of opportunities is scope for nursing because you are deep understanding good one even i can able to say curriculum itself very best curriculum what we have indian curriculum only thing is problem with the gap between theory and practice yes or no when you go into the practice we have lack we have very sound of knowledge but practice is still again how you you ready yourself to practice means you yourself have to keep your objectivity every day when you do the patient care especially outcome again that only make you to do application new new practices whatever you want to do that is other than technology what i am telling so that way patient care outcome means like example patient outcome is mortality morbidity quality of life of patient readmission patient or maybe well, complication reduce many many outcome but all outcome is definitely depend on you not only the doctors that every time thing doctors giving treatment to the patient is getting this better outcome you are the major resource or major one which is contributing that only the patient either you are not only administering the drugs you are every area wherever you are contributing situation involving or coping up the disease by the patient and cope up the treatment by the patient again you yearly monitoring yearly reporting your documentation which you give it to the patient all overall only that outcome that outcome is optimizing means how it is reaching at the better manner that way the a is all the time and so what i told argumented whenever today i am talking about the all the parameters all the parameter what is the outcome used to say patient care clinical outcome is all clinical parameter yes or no bp heart rate example cardiac concerns central venal pressure or maybe pulse pulse artery i mean pulmonary artery pressure or pulmonary artery wedge pressure whatever you can keep in that all will argumented with by a a something is improving or not again you also all the time seeing either because you all the time feel that whether whatever the drugs is effect on that his outcome is better or not either whatever we do some management the patient is improving or not this all help you to that optimization that's why i am telling you critical care nurses and emergency nurses whether you the patient is progress or not our outcome is better or not the a is all a a argumented all whatever i am telling this all kind of monitor coming in other country even i had very happy to say that i got the opportunity to go to us again for one month to training this ai this is again by support by aims which helped me that oh, okay so many thing we have to learn it uh, that do that come back to the aims to make it all argumented way i mean which can apply even nanda i told you nanda we are not practicing here 
even director was so much happy that when you go come back, you try to make it Nanda integrate into the nursing practice that make yourself we are diagnosing, we are able to certify all the things. And yearly warning and acute decompensation that I already told in emergency. Yearly warning means yearly warning report, yearly warning signs or yearly warning parameters that documented and help you, guide you to take yearly decisions. Either you are CPR, either you wanted to, you know, start the patient to the definite, uh, you know, uh, endotechal intubations or the patient start the, you know, early, uh, you know, uh, kind of cannulation, whatever you want to do for the ma management of ABC, VC, ABCD, yes or no. The ABC is all the time take decision whether I have to do or not, do or not, whether I have to depend on the doctor or not. But we have that kind of A would help you to make you to be give directions. Even patient not available, you just show the picture to him by the telephonically inform him that you can do him. But that type of many many algorithm need to be good and developed that's why he told uh, we cannot do it immediately because it's uh, in house inst institutional based we cannot bring something to come to our setup and do some kind of protocol which they followed by others we have to develop the data we have to get more more data to develop that's not possible immediately anything apply into any practices with the human we need kind of training more so this is what overall uh, we do kind of data is more more important the data make you the differences by analyzed by the AA. He developed the own algorithms. That algorithm only we outcome what we predicted and prognose and report. Whatever I discussed with you, everything is based on this. How the artificial intelligence is working in critical care, the emergency, or you do screening outside also. Many patients you want to do. You cannot do by, you know, one AI machine to develop for this and do that because it is take long time to process into the own method and style which you are wanted to do that. I think this all I already discussed with you. And uh, this is the most concern even uh, for the patients, uh, uh, we, uh, you know, we worked with uh, even doctors not available uh, when you collect the histories and everything, how you bring into the, uh, you know, uh, uh, to put in data and use the artificial intelligence to give the output to take the decision on that. I, as I clearly mentioned also before that also, we need augmented intelligence. That means we have to train ourselves and we have to train the machines. That means uh, which, which you want to put many data and bring your own algorithms that algorithm only we recommended and again uh, also the interaction what we collect the history that is bring into the data again we we expected output also the same so whatever expected that's why interaction is more important between the patient and the physician or patient and the nurses that only going to give the exactly result because it's not machine will give that result that may not be possible if you play with the humans so this is what uh, overall my talk today and uh, I think most of the things uh, he discussed, uh, uh, you know, uh, by the, you know, by different manners and uh, overall I expected, uh, you know, nurses to take into the uh, lead in AA and uh, uh, because uh, we, we, we thought that every time it is not my job, not my job and it is not my area, I may not be permitted to do that. Please overcome this aims like institutions, nurses are highly intelligent, highly potentials. So we want to go ahead with this many things that make the differences. Uh, with that, I just conclude because uh, it is the same thing will be the in different manner that I mentioned over there. Thank you very much. Uh, wish you all the best for. Thank you, sir, for your valuable input. And I request Miss Manita, ma'am. I request Babita ma'am to give talk uh, momentum to sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So any any doubts I didn't ask because I have meeting on meeting but 30 minutes after. I am always happy to talk instead of using the formality. You can take the slide, they will give it to you. You can look into it. Same thing almost, uh, I don't want to repeat. I wanted to mostly motivate the nurses because this is my objective of this session. Just to sensitize you, what you go beyond that work. That is my objective. We talked about more about AA, uh, but I am maybe one of the reasons I can say because I started this work, I was enjoying because the young generation are more intelligent than us. What like what now we are in the 50s, 60s, and all you know, overcome by a generation. They are really professional. That's why I, we want you to take in the right track. 
that's why this uh, my talk focus on that how to make you sensitize you motivate you take you to the new country you know, your education and make different different things yes or no this is my objective i fulfilled this i hope you got it thank you so much so can you hear me okay so after these tremendous sessions i need your help little bit actually i have some incomplete sentences which i want to complete so will you help me out okay thank you so much ma'am okay so first sentence is today i feel like dash 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 so miss sanjana sivadam ma'am today i feel like dash 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 so could you complete it First of all, in clear what answer is, answer should be topic. Anything. Topic. Anything. No, no topic. Not topic related. Anything you want. May I feel like a tomato? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So Sanjana Sivadaman, today I feel like anything. Whatever you feel like. Shapal, Miss Aritika man. Oh, great. Uh, Mr. Manohik, sir. Mr. Manohik. No. Mr. Radharam Mali, sir. Today I feel like. No okay, but no motive. Second uh, sentence is I promise that dash dash dash. So, Miss Kajal Sani, ma'am. Help us, ma'am, to complete this sentence. I feel, uh, sorry, I promise that. No, Miss Pratibha Lal, ma'am. I promise that. On AI, good. Okay. Miss Rashmi, ma'am. Okay. I have to improve my knowledge by AI. So you can say anything unrelated to the topic also. Not related. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, I'll say a little change. So as we know, today, uh, this week is a Valentine week. So today is the Taddy day. Okay. So I love Taddy because Miss Lalita, man. I love Taddy because. It's it's soft and you can hug it. <laughs> okay, okay. So thank you so much. It was just an ice breaking session. Now I would like to invite Miss Cecilia M S, Associate Professor, College of Nursing, to speak about AI role into nurse patient care. I hand over the dice. To once again good afternoon or good morning okay just to start with the session am i audible can you please just bear with me my voice is not so good like i was sick and i just came so to start with i would like to start with the icebreaker in the sense like uh, what comes to your mind when you think of like the seven wonders of the world. What are the seven wonders of the world? Taj Mughal, Eiffel Tower, Statue of Liberty, Giza, Pyramid of Giza, Egyptian, TK. Any other difference of opinion? Anyone else has a difference of opinion on these seven wonders? 
a similar question was asked in his classroom of fifth graders. Okay, I want you to play this. Play. Okay, so let us see what is the response. As we all, we are all uh, used to be a way of thinking wherein it is all established facts. We think only that is normal and that is seven wonders of the world. Okay, when we see the flip side of it, how a 10 year old child thought about the wonders of the world, we'll just have a quick view. Yes, ma'am. No, I want I want this to be played. Let's go play it now. Okay, so as I was asking you, what are the seven wonders? Same. Okay, so you were all saying all this. Okay, but um there was one student among the 10 year olds who was not finishing with all the names though this was a part of their SST curriculum that they will know what are the declared seven wonders of the world you know what the child did it was very interesting okay so the teacher asked the girl and the girl told like yeah a little there were so many and i couldn't make it up to seven so it is like the teacher said, yeah, good. Uh, then maybe we can help you out. You tell what and all you have fun. Okay, the girl, what she did was she hesitated and read what are the seven wonders of the world. For her, the seven wonders are to see, okay, to hear, to hear what is happening around her in the world around, to touch to feel the sense of touch and the taste okay the buds that you gives you a sense of pleasure to feel the love and affection of the nature and of our loved ones to laugh laugh is also a sense of joy wherein we relish and enjoy and also to be loved okay so it all depends like when all this was, the room was so quiet and it, things worked out. Okay, so it all depends on the way we think. We are, whether we are also automatic thinkers or creative thinkers. Okay, our intelligence, either it is automated or augmented or creative. Okay, it is man who created the computers and not computers who created man. We all know that. There is an interesting thing that was noted. A man wanted to prove that Google map is wrong. What he did, you know? He collected some 10, 15 mobiles, put it in a cart and he was, Google map was showing full of traffic, but the road was quite empty. So he proved Google map is wrong. Okay, this is what is intelligence. Man created and machine is being used for that. Okay, so further to go on with the discussions. Yeah, AI in nurse patient care. Okay, when we talk about nursing as such, when you think the very thought that we are all nurses, what comes to your mind? Don't read this slide. The slide has nothing. It is an interactive session wherein you just give your own ideas. What do you think when you think of the word nurse? Are you all happy to say that you are a nurse? How many of you are happy? <laughs> Very good. I am so happy to see all of you. Okay, many a times we would like to be called like doctor or all that. No, it's good. Yeah, nurses. So, what do we think like when we hear the term nurse? 
or what do you feel what is in us as such let's be thinkers you can say whatever you want there's nothing wrong nothing correct okay she is a good quality carer to the patient सबसे पहले ऑटोनोमी होना चाहिए ओके गुड शी इज एन एडवोकेट ऑफ राइट एंड रॉन्ग गुड शी इज अ गुड कम्युनिकेटर गुड फ्रॉम दैट एंड my friends from the other side can also and this side also you can contribute even students can contribute your views that's it we are all nurse yes she should be humble first she should be humble first very new to the community she's very near to the community is she not part of the community <laughs> no i take this privilege because she is my student okay i think now she's correct yeah that is the bridge between doctor it acts as a bridge between doctor and a patient then yeah uh when we think of nurse no one thinks of this definition of nursing the unique function of a nurse is to assist an individual sick or well in the performance of those activities contributing to health illness or in the performance of those activities if the patient doesn't have the necessary strength will or knowledge and to assist to a peaceful death all this doesn't come to mind very good i'm so happy but <laughs> but this comprehensive definition of nursing is actually enormous it has encapsulated the whole concept of nursing the acts that we do in those two or three lines of the definition of nursing okay in this era of today where we have a lot of scope of practice the spectra of practice is enormous we think of quality nursing care okay quality nursing care in the sense what are we aiming to are we aiming to promote our own quality of life are we aiming to promote the quality of life of our patients whom we are caring for are we aiming to promote the quality of the care rendered in the institution where we are working okay so quality becomes predominant in all aspects be it education be it nursing care be it communication everything quality demands higher respect and that is the need see information is exploded information is everywhere google uncle will give you information about anything and everything and even this ppt of mine was prepared using chat gpt okay you will not find out I have used AI for preparing these slides. I was sick, so going through a lot of content and then it it was little tedious, and so I sought the help of Open AI, and it just helped and things worked out. Though it cannot manually augment the thought process that I had in preparing, but though it supplements. Okay, so high quality nursing care as such has become mandatory and. that mandate of high process nursing care requires instantaneous processing so we have lot of data we have lot of informations available in the patient side in the place where we work in the institute that we belong to how are we going to utilize those data to take a decisive action decisive action matlab how are we going to help us as an individual to progress in our profession and also to care for the patients who are under our care how are we going to utilize to develop or generate scientific evidence to augment to the services that are required okay so then how are we going to interact with the volumes of data 
data, how was it generated, everything we'll see. Okay, so it is very important that we are in a highly, highly automated situation wherein we have a lot of data and we are supposed to utilize it to provide a better outcome and the outcome is always measured in terms of quality, quality indicators. I know many of the nursing officers are involved in quality works and all that and even while providing care, quality has become an aspect, a parameter to be judged. So, how are we going to utilize all this? So, AI, when it comes to, it is a broad tech, a broad category. Okay, from morning you have uh, listened to two speakers who were saying uh, about what is AI, what is deep learning, machine learning, everything. Okay, so how are we going to utilize to investigate about our patients, to investigate, what do we investigate? What is the prognosis? The other day I had an opportunity to, of interacting with a professor from Israel. Okay, he was talking to me on non-communicable diseases and using our pulse oximeter. You know, pulse oximeter works on photo somography. Okay, that is the technology wherein pulse oximeter works. Okay, he was saying to me that NCDs will have a heart rate variation. And this technology of PPS helps to identify that at the initial stage, which is a form of AI, which will help you to work in the prevention or health promotion aspects. Okay, you know the pyramid or the cycle of Healthcare as such, initially primordial prevention. Okay, then only the curative primary, secondary, tertiary care and the health promotion or the rehabilitation process comes. So, when we are able to identify in an earlier stage, we are able to provide lifestyle modifications to the patient and they will be able to maintain a near normal life or a quality life which they deserve okay and it will also help you to learn and take action taking action see when he was uh, dr deva was discussing on detecting breast cancer where the ai was initially able to diagnose even when human eye cannot detect that was the early stage okay it can be easily operated or treated or whatsoever so how are we going to do that then deduce intelligence actually with all the available informations how are we going to make it as a source of information so we gather a lot of data we intend using computers we send uh, made, uh, samples using a lab his all that but we are feeding in so many data how are we utilizing it okay once we took up a project with rpc the thing was like to reduce the OT waiting hour outside the 7th floor OT. Okay, when that project was initiated, it was very easily able to identify because there was recording in the ward, in the OT. Okay, there were records that are maintained. When the records were scrutinized, data came out and those data were helped to improve the quality of the care or to reduce the waiting are outside the OR room. Okay, so technology as such, it helps to support and also in some cases, uh, it supplements human tasks. We will see how it supplements human tasks. Nurses as such, we have been partnered with machines. I remember when I did nursing, I think many of you will be of my age in uh, 90, late 90s. Okay, we used to have two bottles. Okay, one with Dettol solution and one with water. So, we will put our thermometer inside Dettol. After 5 minutes, then water. Then you have to wipe from bulb to stem. Stem to bulb, all this. Were, and dry testing and wet testing were important procedures while making bed making, all these. But now, things have changed. Students will not even know whether there were mercury thermometers that were used. 
there were Dettol solutions Sarlon and Dettol is 1 is to 10 concentration, no, Dettol is 1 is to 20 and uh, Sarlon is 1 is to 10 sil concentration, okay, all this was in practice, okay, so with emergence of data and all that, those days only manual entry, we need to enter everything manually, but we do with computers, so we have been partnering and nurses have been well adapted to technology, see, now, we have come to even ventilators. Earlier it was fully manually set up. Now you have AI into ventilators wherein you can monitor, you can have suction mode and it, it is easy to handle. We have cardiac monitors which are of different varieties. We have HFNCs, we have lot of technologies that have come out. Okay, so nurses have always partnered with the technology and they have been progressing a lot. Okay, even medical support systems, the data generators of healthcare are, we are the receivers of lot of data. Okay, it is the nurses who collect lot of data and feed. Okay, the indent that we do, the reports that we collect, everything is fed into the system. And so, lot of informations are available. So, nursing at present, when you see, we have so much of manual entry of data and all that. How are we going to utilize that? This is the importance of AI in nursing. See, we have uh, a data related to collection of sample, sending of sample, and also receiving of the reports. Okay, have we ever thought of what is the time duration between collection of sample, receive, receiving in the lab, and then when is the report? Can we do a QI on this? These are small ideas, the infection control practices that you do, the patient, the diagnosis of the patient, the antibiotics that the patient is getting, okay, and likewise all the patients. So, what is the day of duration it takes, the time duration that the patient takes to be cured or free from infection? How are we repeating it? Can a QI be done on that? It is in our hands. Is there any incidence of nosocomial infection in the cubicle? What are the different cases in the cubicle? And how the, what infection did it occur? And what is the predicted source of income? Income in the sense the infection. Okay, so all this. So these are the different things. When there is a shift towards QI and all towards quality, it is the role of nurses to internalize and use all the data so that we formulate, we are an, a profession who are, we have a science and body of knowledge. The other speaker was saying that the nursing curriculum is the best curriculum. I do second it. I always say even to my students, the best curriculum is nursing. See, I have been working with the WHO project on the curriculum of nursing and MBBS curriculum. To all of you, I can proudly say nursing curriculum is the best curriculum. Like it is integrated both vertically and also horizontally. It is well planned, well implemented curriculum. Okay, so with this, all this knowledge, what are we doing? Are we utilizing it with AI too? We are at the hand of machines. Machines are at our fingers. Okay, how are we using our fingers to capsulate, to enhance our profession? So, let's think. Oh, what happened? AI aids for nurses. Actually, now we have a lot of aids which nurses are using and we will have more in future also. The smart sensors. Smart sensors, even your smart watches that you have, okay, the mobiles that you hold, okay, they are all smart sensors, they calculate how many steps you take, okay, they can even guide you of what to take, what you don't need to take or all that, okay, even this is used for patients, even in patients, see, you know, a patient with a shock, will initially have a period of tachycardia followed by bloody. If you identify 
at the episode of tachycardia you will be able to revive the patient better than at a stage of bradi wherein the sinking okay wherein the patient is sinking so ai helps you to identify this at an early stage so that you are able to meet the need of the patient and augment the service so that the life of the patient is saved okay so this is how smart sensors work there are lot of smart sensors sensor you know the person who identified or who discovered that sunlight is effective in hyperbilirubinemia of children neonates is a nurse the person who invented the stoma pouch is a nurse so nurses now world in be- world is behind numbers you know many nurses are applying for patents everywhere okay they are devising many devices okay there are a lot of things that the world is behind okay so sensors can be developed in many aspects even for a unconscious patient if the patient is going to make a move <coughs> sensors can alert you predictions see the ai has this capacity of predicting like with all the data that is collected they can say the trend you know when covid came into uh, existence there were predictions like iit models many models were there biomedical models which predicted what will be the waves and how it how intensity the problem will be okay so this is all because of the predictions with the data that is available even there was a uh, notice or a publication from aims saying that many of the patients who visit aims are all men compared to females how this data arrived you know it is all from the registration from the registration desk you have data of male female okay from that they analyzed and they came. so likewise you have lot of things that can be predicted using the data that you collect even the uh, care that you provide or the utilization of inventory by a particular ward okay which can be predicted and it will effective it will help in effective budgeting for the next year then smart nursing aids also smart nursing aids during covid you would have seen uh in um, private hospitals in corporate hospitals there were robots which were wa- working like giving food and all that okay there are nursing aids like that sophie i think all of you would would uh, have heard about sophie and now alexa has become integral part of our families morning starts with alexa talking to alexa it's soothing it gives you the update of the day okay so these smart nursing aids will not replace nurses but it will augment the service until and unless it is used appropriately then smart algorithms also ai helps in developing algorithms algorithms in the sense if a patient has this condition if it is a stage 1 pressure ulcer that is being identified by a sensor what has to be done and how care has to be done so that further pressure ulcer is not exaggerated or the condition doesn't worsen if a patient at risk of fall is identified further there is fall is prevented and the patient is safe okay all this now you have the recent developments you can see i have this bottle this bottle is sold by amazon it is around 6000 it is sponsored by apple company it gives you sensor like what time you have to drink water okay it gives an alert and the other one is a napkin wherein it gives an alert when it is wet okay it can be used in elderly patients who are completely bedridden okay there are sensors wherein the child sleep phase cycle is being monitored and there are many other sensors that are being utilized like even for fall even uh, like a stoma pouch wherein when the stoma gets filled up you get signals and all that okay so these are sensor devices and now next coming to how ai can be used in nursing there are a lot of ways that we can utilize ai in nursing 
visual technology visual technology is by looking or computing the physical image how can we utilize for nursing to diagnose condition for example now you know mintra has an app like if you they have a sensor if you scan your skin it will uh, prescribe you products according to your skin type have you ever tried no these are technology okay now it is add uh, is there in place likewise in nursing we can with the physical image we can assess the and diagnose the skin wound integrity and further how to um provide care for the wound okay whether it is stage 1 stage 2 or stage 3 how are we going to promote the health of the skin and then monitor breathing patterns also earlier we used to put only patches who have that ecg leads to monitor the breathing now though it is not needed only sensor okay it senses and you get it okay identify nonverbal cues of pain anxiety or depression see earlier i have to say i am depressed i feel bad i am not well but now even a machine can find out when i say to alexa alexa i love you alexa will say it's so nice of you thank you okay so this is how machine is improving okay they can sense the verbal cues okay if i say i hate you can i know how can i improve myself okay so this is a technology can be utilized in then voice assistance yeah voice assistance uses voice commands to identify the relevant information of the moment for example here i was talking about alexa even we have a siri siri we say to call okay we have google assistance all this even in nursing it the with the systems that we have we can also have to retrieve information on the nursing policies okay nursing policies are not uniform throughout the world okay it is different and so for us to know what is the difference what is the exact picture of the other place or to upgrade our own system it is essential that we need to retrieve information so those retrieval of information can be done by using voice assistance it is not necessary that you have to type yeah this i just wrote yesterday uh, prepare an essay about ai and a welcome address ai to help me a lot okay it gave an essay of around 300 words okay i was so happy yeah half my work is done it gives you bibliography too okay so it's very good then though my students to help me okay answer patient questions such as when an upcoming test is scheduled all this it can be easily done because if you have an assistant uh, you have uh, patient care areas you have all those uh, assistants where the computers you can feed the data and it just comes where you have to go even in metro stations you have the the exact directions how you need to go so all this can be done using ai with a chat assistant okay set timers and reminders for nursing care tasks yeah that can be done as like we, earlier we used to schedule like suction if there are eight patients in the ward if we have to suction all eight then we'll start with one and end at eight then feed start with one end with eight okay but now it is a different scenario each patient demands a different type of care that is required so how are we going to maintain that that can be helped with a set of timers with the ai all this okay we are all working in government it's okay but in corporate when you see patients are quite demanding they are in separate rooms okay if you go 5 minutes late they will question you from head to toe and you have to answer them it's you are scrutinized okay so how are we going to handle the pressures it is all it can be done it is done though the way to ease it is using ai machine learning machine learning as a sense like we are feeding the machine the details of how to act okay all the inputs like dr deva was saying for radio diagnosis it is of very much use yeah it is for nursing also it is of very much use you can say uh, this type of diagnosis 
will require this this type of care so when a person comes if this is the diagnosis then what is the care that i am going to give so this these are the cares that i am going to go uh, go about and what care which is the priority and how outcome is measured how am i going to measure effectiveness of the care that i have provided for the patient okay identifies a patient's course of their plan of care journey then initiates and completes that automatically such as scheduling appointments see when you see incorporated is so difficult and even you will accept every time you have to call another doctor for consultation and you have to wait if the doctor doesn't come you have to again remind you have to call the sr remind make the uh, appointment done consultation done and then plan for the care inform the physician okay so this can all be automated uh, doctor whoever is seeing the patient can put what in our consultation he needs that can automatically prompt in the computer or the gadget of the person or the consultant who is going to who has to consult this patient so he will automatically fix it online he can come see the patient he can feed us output so that the treating physician can see okay this is being done in corporate sector okay it is of much need and this will help us save our time calling every time i remember once uh, when i was working with apollo i was working with apollo as uh, assistant professor there uh, there was a time when nurses went on strike okay it is like when they went on strike it was the faculty from college have to go and augment the services there it was such an herculean task nothing is possible okay we were just trying to make up patients were all upside down okay they were all sitting on top of our heads nothing can be controlled and doctors they don't know they are saying only they know nurses know you have to call them every time and everything has to be told them then only they will even for an insulin you have to call and then you have to confirm then after giving you have to call them again tell and it became so tedious and later on life changes okay that ground reality made them work a lot to improvise on the system so that how they are able to work okay so this is how machine learning will help you when the patient glucose blood glucose level is this rbs is this blood sugar level is this then what to be given okay this can be confirmed it will automatically show in the physician's uh, gadget and the physician has to give his opinion immediately and they have a time frame 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 1 hour within the 1 hour the physician has to give his prescription and that prescription is followed by the nurse after execution it is again feeded and then the output is also given so everything is systematically organized with the help of ai expert systems expert systems solve complex problems yeah process decisions rather than human quicker than human experts you were seeing that dr deva was speaking like we uh, human this machines can find out or diagnose so how are we going to predict cost or uh, of the care based supplies see what what are the supplies that are needed for the care of the patient and what is the predicted cost even the inflations okay they can predict the inflation inflations they can predict the usage the inventory and how what care has to be how this diagnosis related groups were formed when a patient you have packages now you know no for cesarean delivery 2 lakhs or i don't know i am talking about maybe this is very old information that i am giving you what is the whatever is that in for hernia 1 lakh 2 lakh how all this is formed because hernia will require this care this is the algorithm of care and within 3 days the patient has to be discharged so how are we going to it is all using expert systems the knowledge that is obtained through that okay how what about the readmission rates relapse rates financial hardships increased length of stay all that how are we going to manage it depends on the situation of the patient condition of the patient ai is used to determine whether the patient will have an increased length of stay in the hospital 
or the patient will be. It is all predictive. Certain things is fed to the computers, certain things the computers generate. Like you saw the breast cancer example. Virtual reality. Virtual reality is very interesting these days. Yeah, you will emerge into that. How many of you have played virtual reality games? Ah, good. I have my colleague who has played. Okay. We have virtual reality. Not only games. You have simulation centers. Wherein you immerse. You don't feel. Okay. One, I don't even feel. Yeah, how many of you have gone into the ghost houses or mirror houses? When you go to mirror houses, do you feel that only mirror is there? You are into. It is similar to VR. Okay. So... These virtual reality experiences helps in education and also to get ourselves equipped. See, many a times, like uh, how many of us have learned injections using a potato and uh, potato and friends? Potato. Now, those students do not use. You have IV arms that are available. You have simulation things. Okay, these are all advances in technology. Earlier, we used to always run with it. Potato and a syringe with a needle. Okay, just to learn. <coughs> then later on, it is like uh, intramuscular injections. We used to give for our friends. That is the first learning experience. Teacher will say, you should know the pain before injecting to the patient. Okay, so that is how our teacher thought. But now, you have technology that is advanced. You have IV arms. You have many other things. You have even uh, mannequins that are available which give you real uh, sense. Okay, so all that. So, virtual reality can also be used for nursing as such. The effective modeling must address, like uh, we are having a lot of innovations in AI, but how are we going to utilize? I think the next session will be harnessing the power of AI. But I have few concerns that we have to really think of like um, long-term depend dependencies in healthcare. See, long-term dependencies on healthcare in the sense like uh, diabetes, all these NCDs, you know, NCDs are becoming a big threat to the society rather than the communicable diseases. It is emerging like anything. Cancer, diabetes, diabetes heart disease, hypertension, everything. Even a small child comes with hypertension. Diabetes. Okay, what are we up to? It is not lifestyle risk factor. Okay, so how are we going to? These AI mediated devices can help us to identify at an early stage and intervene so that quality of life of our patients can be at ease. Okay, where ahead is and admission information though we have a lot of informations and all these helps us to have a, a set of diagnosis, which is very common. See, whether it is an endemic or epidemic, we can see at hospital data and find out. What is the incidence of a disease when we see the incidence of disease in, in patients coming to AIMS? We have huge data. We all became standstill when the office was hacked, right? And so... Now we have all become, there was a day where everything was manually written. But now without system, we don't work. We are not able to even think of it. Okay. Then episodic recording and irregular timing. See, this is progression. See, episodic, uh, the, Dr. Gopi was talking to you about follow-up of patients. Okay. Now AI has come to that existence. Yes, uh, before a few weeks, I was reading an article from US. They were saying that pills, pills are AI induced, like they have sensors in the pills to uh, make sure that the patient is compliant to the drug. These, AI, these pills are given for patients who are supposed to compulsorily take medicine, like for example, tuberculosis or cancer, you want the patient to be compliant to the, to the drug. Okay, in these cases, it is very essential, you have to check whether the patient is compliant or not. In that, they are having sensors so that to check whether the patient has taken or not. Okay, we had the DOTS regime, where in, in front of the healthcare provider, the patient will be taking drugs. Now, it has varied. Okay, to the next extent. Then, there is... 
there is one yeah i'm running short of time there is another uh, technology like for cancer patients they are planning to take a drug and the drug itself is co- will take a sensor into it and that will provide information to the source on which cells that the, the drug is acting and what changes does it make in the genome of the patient and how is it pure giving curative effect to the patient or what effect does it have on the patient okay so all these are very much advances that are being happening definitely the way or ahead of uh, uh, i need to just uh, give you few informations on the ethical implications privacy and confidentiality we have lot of data and we have to maintain that bias and discrimination see the human bias and discrimination that we carry can be carried on by the systems also so it is always essential that man masters computer okay responsibility and accountability if there is something wrong which happens who is responsible okay only man can be responsible not a machine job displacement don't think job displacement nothing autonomy and patient choice is also another a uh, thing which is of very much importance transparency explainability all this so way to go ahead is there is it it is only an emerging speciality and there is lot it to be done and let us all join hands there are a lot of things that we can do in our own areas of practice to practice as a profession as an empowered person in our profession and to contribute to our healthy nation thank you any any clarifications <laughs> thank you ma'am for motivating us to improve our knowledge so as to provide quality care i request miss manita ma'am to hand the token of appreciation to miss cecilia ma'am. Our next speaker is a programmer. He has successfully delivered two projects with ACR and is currently the co-member of server team, development team, and chief MSSO. I invite Mr. Anurag Krishna Sharma, sir, programmer, computer facility, to the dais. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? I see a few. You may not end. I see a few familiar faces. I may have took a few classes of you in computer science. So uh, let me introduce myself. I am Anurag Sharma. i work in your beloved uh, computer facility as a programmer and i joined 2 years ago before that i was a researcher at uh, indian institute of technology hyderabad and currently i'm also pursuing research at uh, iit delhi my area of interest is algorithmic complexity computer vision and a little bit of machine learning i was invited to talk about harnessing the power of ai now remember i am Uh, i do not belong to the medical field like my esteemed uh, people here dr gopi dr dev sharma so they all have given wonderful speeches on how ai has impacted us and how it will and how we should learn to control it because in the end 
it's a machine and if anything that has to be accountable it should be a man a person operating it not the machine so the main idea of ai and how to control it and how to use it as a resource rather than how to uh, be in it like we cannot be completely dependent on it we must drive through it okay so uh, i will take you to the inner engineering of how the uh, artificial intelligence works and how you can actually use the technical knowledge and how you can actually implement ai if you want to in the system i have taken two test cases here that how people before us uh, in the medical field have used ai to improve the results and uh, so we began so uh, when i was asked to give the talk i actually went to my professor at iit delhi and asked him that how do i define artificial intelligence because it's a complex topic it's not a means you cannot define it in one line it's a phd topic people do two and three phd's to actually master that how you would actually define intelligence because it's a it's a crucial term who would you call intelligent in the absolute term means a skilled surgeon intelligent of course a skilled engineer of course intelligent a fisherman intelligent of course but not actually machine can do all of that so how would you measure intelligence from one perspective to different so uh, dr shauri my supervisor said uh, uh, i don't know he said he, he doesn't know what ai is <laughs> and that is fine right because you can't define certain intelligent perspective so i said let's ai define ai so i think you must know about chat gpt yeah you know chat gpt so i went to chat gpt and i said define ai and that's what chat gpt tells me it tells me that ai is the simulation of human intelligence that it's designed to think and act like human and that is exactly what a machine would say a machine would say that it is designed to act and think like human which is contrary to what harnessing means you would harness a resource you won't harness a thing that will think and act like a human and it said that the goal of ai is to perform tasks that typically require human level intelligence of course it can but can it takes decision like a human would do it's based on the data right the more data you feed into the more accurate perception of result it will create okay so the ai the goal of ai is more of a pattern recognition like how much data you give and how much it can absolutely make a graph out of it how can it make function that particular uh, input and how it gives the output it actually behaves in such a way that when you give the next input it will behave in a certain output but humans don't work that way we are absolute mensual creature we often do things that are unpredictable so we cannot fit in the definition of this ai of course but we can achieve our goal of having an ai and how to harness the substance by using some philosophy and some applied math and of course we have to input a lot of data math is very important math is the most crucial part of ai why math is important because we have to find a pattern of the output we have to find how things behave we have to find that how when we are give a particular set of results to it how it will behave and that is how we define that how a model will work well okay ai is a broad field it has multiple classification it has various fields and all of the field are a completely research topic most of them uh, speaker before me talk about the expert system and augmented reality and virtual reality and they are all extremely extremely uh, developing research topics because they actually touch the areas that uh, require harnessing so ai the most prominent field of ai is machine learning machine learning is the method by which we ask the machine to learn itself a behavior pattern so we took it by the supervised learning which we give the data and we said that you have to learn it on the basis of the data we give you or we can do it unsupervised learning or the uh, random classification that it learns on its own and then we have a deep learning which is often complex because we take a lots and lots of data 
and we have to get the output on a frequent. Then we have the natural language processing, the one which uh, takes our handwriting recognition and the one which actually learns what we say in a natural language and then process it and then gives the output. Then we have the expert system, which actually uh, does a specific task. It actually performs a specific set of tasks and an expert in it. And then we have a computer vision and it uh, helps in image recognition. It helps in computer vision. It helps in uh, uh, finding uh, like a, uh, uh, the breast cancer scenario, the malignant and uh, benign case and that. We have a speech recognition, the Google AI we use or text to speech and speech to text and that. Other than we have robotics and all the fields. So these are all uh, somehow subsets of the artificial intelligence. A brief uh, history of AI actually uh, started in around 1950s. Uh, a professor, Dr. Alan Turing, um, British professor, who was working on the World War II, um, and he cracked the Enigma, the German cipher, it was used for, uh, uh, they had this crucial, very uh, unpredictable cipher, the Germans. And uh, then there was a team formed of uh, highly intelligent computer scientists and mathematicians at that time. And they actually worked together. And uh, Dr. Alan Turing was one of the core members in that. And he actually cracked the code Enigma. Later after the World War II, Dr. Turing worked in many fields of computer science. One of the field he actually works was a Turing test. So before that, we actually do not know, before 1950s, we were actually unaware of what a machine can do and what are the limits of machine, what some things that can be solved and some things that cannot be solved. An example of a thing that cannot be solved is a uh, farting problem. We cannot tell if a machine will give output and that is an undecidable problem. We can never know. No matter how fast the machine will go, we can never know if the machine will halt. It's a very interesting topic. Alan Turing gave it and he called it the undecidability problem. So in 1950s, Alan Turing gave us the idea that something that can be solved and something that cannot be solved. And after that, the artificial intelligence terms coined that how much uh, input or how much data we can feed into some system that can actually produce a uh, desired output. After that, uh, in 1965, when Eliza machine, which was uh, something called, uh, which actually had a dialogue, a kind of chat, the first chatbot you can say was developed. And one of the most uh, um, influential discovery of machine uh, was in 1997, when, uh, when uh, the chess, Russian chess grandmaster the Gary Kasparov was defeated by a machine, which was a huge feat at that time because he was uh, brilliant. He was one of the uh, most fierce and most uh, uh, prominent, fearful chess player of all time. And machine beat him. So that actually scared people at that time that how can a program, a machine designed by human, can actually defeat a person, not just a person, the most uh, intelligent chess player of all time. And that's how people went more into it. And after the 1997 incident, people said that, okay, if we can be Gary Casper, or maybe we can work more on it. And maybe we can actually fine tune it more. Maybe we can, um, if we give it more uh, input, maybe we could uh, do something more intelligent in the field of maybe uh, self-driving car or maybe more the pattern recognition method. In 2016, uh, and you can actually uh, find this uh, in YouTube. There's a game called AlphaGo in uh, China and Japan, and which is a very crucial game. So a machine, a program, actually beat the champion of AlphaGo in that uh, YouTube video. You can actually watch that lecture. It's very brilliant that how a machine that actually developed by humans in just a span of three or four months beat the most prominent AlphaGo player of all time. And after that, the actually things uh, keep on moving. The AI boomed. It's a buzzword now. Everyone using AI. It's a technology term. People say that we have implemented AI in that, AI in that, and AI in that. And people like, okay. So it's a buzzword now. But the crucial definition of AI, the deep is the mathematics, how it is used. In next slides, we'll talk about how few people have uh, used AI 
to actually uh, solve some dermatologist problem and some uh, um, uh, heart diseases. So, see. So the most uh, prominent thing about uh, any uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning problem is the data. So how do we store data is one of the most uh, uh, important part. The data must be cleaned. If it's not cleaned, we have to clean it later. So the best thing for uh, in the health perspective, if we are talking about the medical record, if we are talking about something that uh, should be used in the healthcare, the first thing is having a processed, uh, more clean data so that we can actually work on it. And that uh, it's how the electronic health record is introduced. We have the data, we have certain information about it, but we have to uh, use it in a separate way. We have to use it in such a way that we can actually implement it. AIMS has a huge amount of data, but uh, uh, how much data is uh, clean, how much data we can uh, utilize, it's actually very less. And we are constantly working on it. And hopefully we will have a very uh, large chunk of useful data in maybe good time. So. 30% of all the data is occupied by healthcare information because every wearable device you use, every BP machine or uh, whatever hospital you go, they actually capture the data. Even these smart watches capture your every step, your every heart movement. So all these data they actually got stored and they actually watches your pattern. Recently, the Apple Watch 7 was introduced. So it has a feature that uh, recognizes pattern like if your heartbeat is racing and suddenly there's a crashing sound and it hears people scream then the ai the apple's ai assumed that you must be in a crash so it just called the nearest 911 the american uh, emergency number now uh, people were in roller coaster at that time few people so people wearing apple watch went to the roller coaster and the roller coaster, the merry-go-round, the big machine, also have the same scenario. People were screaming, there was a crashing sound all of a sudden, and uh, the heart rates, were, heart rates were booming up. And so suddenly, the machine called 911 everywhere. So there's all these uh, police and ambulance were coming to the roller coaster that, okay, there's an accident. But it wasn't the case. So the this is the AI that actually useful. Like, uh, it's a very good measure that if, if there's a certain scenario, then uh, this must be the crash. But that's actually not true. Sometimes the pattern do not match. And that is why we have to fine tune it more and more. We can be perfect in some time, but not today. So this is the example of Apple's Watch 7. Hopefully they are rectifying it. And uh, this is an example of how AI is constantly developing. Google developed a barred AI a few days ago. And it was a competitor to the chat GPT. So the presentation of Bard AI was uh, done two days ago and it asked the question to the Bard AI, the Google's Bard AI and it uh, gave a wrong answer to some basic question and Google lost $100 billion that day. The stock plunged. So that is how the impact of a wrong AI measure can bring, how much uh, wrong information can lead you in trouble. So that is why we have to be very careful when we talk about how the machine's implication on uh, life would be so we have to use the electronic health record data into some useful information these are the some possible features of uh, electronic health record we we should have a patient record management we should have a patient portal we have some lab analytics we have the medical history and all of that we have we should have in a customized uh, template form so that we can actually uh, this is just a template that we should use or we could actually add some more features to it that uh, will help us to assess the situation more gently and uh, make a modeling more clearly. Uh, before uh, I'll tell you the way of uh, harnessing uh, the AI or the math behind it, I'll uh, go through some benefits that uh, were uh, implemented into the field. Uh, the speaker before me talked about the AI in nursing scenario and she told a few benefits into it. I will just extend into that the health information technology to uh, deliver a, a long, it has a patient safety. So using AI as a tool for a clinical judgment rather than using AI for a more uh, decision making, we have to use it to assess our current scenario and 
make us help us into making a more improvised judgment uh, that is the most uh, benefit i can find of ai the first thing would be reducing human error i, did, I read a report somewhere that uh, one out of uh, 10 diagnoses by medical professionals are often not correct and which is acceptable because they are human too and sometimes mis diagnosis happens but it actually can lead to a very serious consequences to the person actually it can actually uh, be very non gentle way of in his life so yeah so we have to reduce this human error to minimum level and ai can help in that that ai are if ai is capable uh, of matching the accuracy that is required so we can actually help it to help our diagnosis and a paper in 2017 was released that uh, uh, the dermatologist level classification of skin cancer with dna so deep neural network is one of the classification of uh, ai it uses uh, something called a convolutional neural network convolution is the repetition of some model again and again and again so that it fine tunes into something more precise okay so this paper was uh, released in 2017 by andrea stava it actually used a tnn a convolutional neural network it was trained around in 129000 images <coughs> and it has 2032 images and they actually used the trained data to find the okay. they also used 21 dermatologist they also used 21 dermatologist to actually measure that how the uh, model performed with reference to the uh, humans so there were 21 skilled dermatologists and there was this uh, convolution neural network modeling and they used some mathematical model into it and they then they compared the results and the results were uh, uh, talking because uh, it was actually using a three phase uh, classification and a nine phase classification among two different diseases so uh, the results were so you can see the skin layer images then it actually uses a series of deep convolution neural network and after uh, some convolution and these are the things you will see on the uh, bottom right the colors the convolution the average pool the max pool the concat soft max these are all mechanism like linear regression and all that that uh, actually forms a pattern that how these images are actually formed into pixels and how these pixels are then uh, uh concatenated to uh, input to another um uh, like a it's a convolution like one model gives input to the other model and then there's another model so every uh, dot you see in that is a convolution model and after that the data is spread out again uh, it joined and again it spread out so that after a few means many round of convolutions it actually classifies into uh, malignant malignant and benign and uh, the results were very good the aoc or the area and the curve of uh, um, some images were uh, around 0.96 or 96% the aoc refers to how much uh, false positive we have ignored and true negatives we have ignored means uh, we if uh, the result is yes our machine should give yes that is the case if the, if the result is no the machine should also give no if uh, the classification is not there the machine should deny it and if the classification is true to that the machine should give true so auc or area under curve defines that how much if the modeling we choose was uh, uh, successful in determining the uh, true positives and false negative we have to actually remove the false negatives uh, false positives and true negatives so you can see that the uh, average auc of the results in this paper is around 0.96 which is uh, brilliant and the more images they uh, trained they got the results even better which is uh,
Okay. So the model was around 0 0.9 for uh, AUC and the results which they got was more than the dermatologist, the professional dermatologist they used around 72 to 73% on the 3 way accuracy and around 57% in the 9 way accuracy. So the machine was more accurate than humans in some cases because it required a more of a pixel recognition than actually a diagnosis. It actually recognized pixels, it actually recognized that okay, certain skin diseases have a certain pixel articulation, certain skin diseases have a certain degeneration of pixel on maybe uh, uh, on this uh, coordinate. So this, this is where the machine outperforms humans because it can actually uh, process that image into a millionth time uh, more. Like it can actually find patterns that human eye cannot. And this is where the harnessing actually works out. The machine can actually outperform human in certain, certain areas. Of course, it cannot make decisions based on this. It has to give to the practitioner or uh, the doctor that we, we have certain results, what should we do next? But this is where the machine can take its roots. The second benefit is the uh, first was the uh, reducing human error. So we were successful in that. That uh, we the, in the 2017 paper I showed that uh, these uh, we have reduced the human error. We have actually outperformed few of the professional dermatologists in that. And the second should be the personalizing treatment. So AI can use predictive model or uh, AI can use algorithms to actually uh, analyze the volumes of data we have. We can have multiple patients and we can see how the and how certain uh, procedure affects them. Like uh, uh, the speaker before me, Professor Mana said that uh, they have a drug injected and the drug will actually behave around there. The drug will give the data that how it actually works on certain cells. So these kind of cells gives us a predictive analysis of what these drugs will do in certain scenarios. And the more patterns we have, the more accurately we can uh, proceed to a large scale deployment or a more personalized behavior of certain uh, patients. AI models can also recognize patterns at what certain people will face Alzheimer's and maybe after attaining a certain age and they have been successful in doing that. The data collected from variable devices and uh, mobile app also uh, adds into it and say that how uh, certain heartbeat rates or how certain oxygen levels are uh, functioning and how if it's uh, varying too much and we should be worried or not. Uh, the next uh, benefit is gaining clinical knowledge. So we have the predictive analysis and we have uh, the machine learning which actually can predict that what is the happening of a certain occurrence. Well, what if, if it could happen? Uh, and what is the probability for that? For that, we use uh, a naive based serum in some cases. It actually uh, tests the expectancy of uh, drug to work on certain cases of uh, uh, diseases. We use a K naive base or a PuffMex uh, model or a logistic regression to actually work on certain features that certain drug or a certain, uh, uh, certain tool will help us overcome this uh, uh, diseases. So according to one research, they actually predicted a type 2 diabetes through just through electronic health record. They didn't even see the patient, they just have the electronic health record. They actually process the electronic health record in a certain way and they predicted that uh, these, these electronic health record of this uh, specific person we have have the uh, type 2 diabetes and they were 82% successful in doing that just by looking at the EHR and uh, these are the modeling they used. They used, uh, they chose around 23,281 diabetes patients. They take a sample of around 300. They used classification model and they used different types of model. They used neural network, they used softmax, they used KNN, they used random forest. So these are the different models and their accuracy. They have uh, uh, defined that certain model so the first image is the prediction accuracy of the model. What model works uh, uh, 
around uh, what percentage and the second model is again the sensitivity and the feature set which actually uses the AUs here the uh, defeating the false uh, positives and the true negatives so the AUC around this case was 0 0.98 about 98 percent accurately it uh, identified the true positives one of the other benefit is uh, enhancing clinical decision support so uh, the more uh, integrated health information technology or health information system goes with the machine modeling the more enhanced the more uh, productive healthcare will become it actually will take less time for clinicians medical doctors nurses to actually uh, work on every patient it actually can automate few of the tasks to the machine and we can get uh, better results we have as uh, some of the uh, early applications was an alert system for more uh, uh, accurate description of a certain uh, uh, emergency situation like if there's a abnormality in some cases we should have a ai model which actually predicts that okay there is a much severe case that's going to happen in maybe a few, uh, few hours time so it actually alerts the time and it can also uh, use that what certain data is missing what uh, ehr data we have and they say uh, it should have this certain data and we don't have it so clinical decision support can actually help us in doing that and one of uh, other benefit is improving efficiency as i said the uh, less time will be wasted on uh, certain applications the formalities which we do like ai can actually use uh, to fill out forms very quickly like if we have certain forms that actually uses um, uh, neural network or ai to actually fill the records in very less time or if we have certain uh, inputs to uh, parameter it actually can uh, uh, take out all the relevant parameters into it and doctors can actually work less on filling out those forms and uh, uh, doing diagnosis on stuff to find out certain results it actually should uh, work very well with the productive analysis that we discussed further so it will improve efficiency it will save time it will have a more prompt uh, uh, diagnosis of the of certain patient and overall it will benefit so let us come to the technicalities that how if you would have to start building uh, ai model how would you harness it how would you effectively work such that uh, you utilize the resources you have and you make a very gentle very good model which will give you more fruitful uh, uh, result the first step would be to define the problem you would you should know that what problem specifically are you trying to solve using ai the next should be the choosing right type of model uh, we have certain libraries now that will actually walk you through certain python and coding libraries that will take you that what model should be used on certain situation if you if you have a image and you want to classify those image into certain uh, uh, results you would use a convolutional neural network or you would use a deep neural network or you would use a, a computer vision technology if you had a, a voice data you would use a recurrent neural network kind of thing if you would have a more text data you would maybe use a linear regression or a softmax technology to define that parameters should be set into certain modeling modeling is very important because a wrong model can give you very hazardous and haphazardly result you would not want that especially in healthcare because uh, certain life depends on it we have to be very precise at what model should we choose and before choosing any model we must test it if it's been used before the results are good and after that we can actually work on uh, fine-tuning that model then we should gather the data and train the model the next step would be to evaluate the certain result we should uh, after that train the result we should divide our data into certain sets train test development and then we will actually release it for certain uh, uh, applications then after we can deploy and monitor and uh, if any 
uh, fine tuning required, you can actually monitor uh, your model. Beyond all that, we have some certain limitations for that. A uh, few people before we have talked about the limitations of AI. I would not take much time into it. The one of the most serious issue is uh, safety and security. We have been a victim of that. Uh, the AI has a limited learning capability. The less data you feed, it actually gives you the amount of data you feed into it. It actually is biased according to the person who is making the model because AI is made by humans. So if the human is biased, the modeling will be biased too. The transparency is often case too because it's a black box. You don't know what modeling is fit into it. So there's no transparency into it. And AI lacks common sense. It actually won't give you the more intuition or precise uh, uh, result as a human would do. So these are all the limitations that AI has. And uh, it will take a few years time to um, maybe more uh, precise uh, where I can actually trust an AI over a human. Because if you said that uh, uh, if I had to trust a person or a machine, I would certainly trust a person now rather than a machine. And it should be the case after all. Uh, uh, machine works very predictability with predictability. With humans don't. So be safe. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the excellent presentation on AI. Indeed, the power of AI is limitless and harnessing. It would definitely change how we provide quality patient care. So now I would like to request Ms. Cecilia, ma'am, to give memento as a token of appreciation to Mr. Anurag, sir. Thank you, sir, for accepting the memento. So let's go for lunch. We will resuming our session after. Welcome back all of you. We will start our next session, post lunch session. So our next speaker is Dr. Pragya Ma'am, Associate Professor, College of Nursing Ames. Ma'am has a vast technical um, teaching experience on, of 18 years and is presently in a committee for competency-based curriculum review for NCD by Southeast Asian Region Organization, WHO. There are several research pro pro papers published in national and international journals to her credit. So I cordially invite Dr. Pragya ma'am uh, on the dice and share her experience. Thank you for the kind words. So good afternoon all. So how it's after lunch? Sleepy? <laughs> okay, so we'll have more of a discussion session for this. If you feel sleepy. So uh, if we talk about after COVID, uh, what has changed? What do you feel the changes? What are the changes? 
the kind of care we give to the patient related to nursing, what has changed? Or during the time of COVID, if you remember, what change was there? <coughs> In the technological advancement during the time of COVID, though the telehealth was there, the concept before also, but uh, during the time of COVID, we all have noticed that technology has taken up a great leap. And right from the telehealth to telemedicine, which was there a practice in the countries abroad, in India also, we have been utilizing it at a great level. So, the use of technology has increased during that time. And the concept of tele-nursing also comes from the concept of telehealth. So, in telehealth, we are seeing the whole providing the health care to all the uh, areas. Okay. So, we will be talking about telehealth in this uh, session. Tele-nursing. So, if we say tele-nursing, what is tele is simply something which is done at a distance. Something which is at a distance, we say it as a tele. And nursing is to provide the nursing care. Okay. So, if we say what is tele-nursing, it is just the use of telecommunication and information technology to provide the nursing services in healthcare when the distance exists between the patient and the nurse. So, that in simple terms, we can say tele-nursing. So, for tele-nursing, if we use uh, the phone, if we use the text messages or we use the laptop or computer and we provide some or other form of care to the patient, that is the use of technology and information science and the nursing science to provide the nursing care to the patient. So, what sort of care we can provide through this? What do you think, what sort of care we can give? When the patient is sitting at such a huge distance, someone sitting in a hilly area, someone sitting in a uh, rural area, so how do you provide and what do you think, what kind of care we can provide to them? Actually, we can't provide direct care, but we can guide you. Yeah. So, a kind of physically, uh, the care which you give, the direct care which you give to the patient in the wards, that is not there, but still there is a lot of things which we, the guiding, the counselling, the support, the teaching, the education of the patient, because not only the part of that, the patients, they require a lot of support, the query. And the, someone sitting at the home, they also have a query about how many medications. So, if something is written in the discharge card, they don't understand that how many medications ultimately I have to take. They have a query, they cannot run from the hilly areas or from some rural areas to us. So, at the same time, if they if there is a teleconsultation facility or tele nursing facility you can quite uh, we can you can we can easily say that this many times you can have the drug to be taken so we have heard these three terms very frequently like telehealth tele nursing and telemedicine so what is the difference in these three are they all same very frequently we hear these terms no like telemedicine facility Telehealth is there, telenursing is there. So, what, what difference comes in between all these three? Telehealth is something which is a broader umbrella term. So, under telehealth, if we say, so a hospital may be utilizing a telehealth facility and they may be utilizing the services from the nurses, from the pharmacists, from the doctors, from the therapist. Okay. So, that Utilization of facility by different professionals comes under the broad umbrella term of telehealth facility utilization. And when we say tele-nursing, it is a subset of telehealth. Okay. And it is the use of information technology. As I said, we are using the information, we are using the computer education, we are using the nursing, uh, nursing science education in providing the care to the patient. And as, as, as I said, what kind of care? Though we are sitting at a distance, the kind of guidance which is required, the kind of support which is required, how frequently the follow-up, the kind of, suppose if a wound is to be seen. So, what is the condition of wound we can easily see from a distance through video conferencing. Okay. So, that also is we are doing a kind of monitoring. If someone's, uh, we are doing the blood sugar monitoring, the patients are doing and we can easily see, we can check out what are the values, whether they are in the normal range or not. 
and if they require the support the dietary education the education for it what kind of diet so everything can be done through the tele nursing then if we talk about telemedicine facility telemedicine will be dealing with more of a part of a diagnostic and treatment part okay so these are the differences between these three terms and if we say how it started so right from uh, very old time also if we say in 1800s also from the time the telephone was there the the tele this tele services were utilized so alexander graham bell in 1876 he was utilizing this facility to call the uh, his help from the mr watson in from by the time of 1900 years it was the contact between the physicians and the patient and uh, during the world war also this was utilized and Ms. dr j sanders he is known as the father of telemedicine in the current times so from in year 2001 so this telemedicine network was set up between the three units aims delhi pgi chandigarh and sg pgi lucknow so this was the first time that in india the uh, communication center started between these three centers and the first telemedicine um, this unit was formed in 2003 in the trivandrum by 2005 this national telemedicine task force was established and by 2020 we have seen like uh, during the time of covid we have all have seen uh, like uh, the we were uh, the uh, the said facility and the uh, we were the center for providing the education in 2020 so the ministry of health and family welfare the nurses training was also going on through the telemedicine facility so if we see uh, that how this over the years this development has occurred that from the year 1800 when the telephone was there and was used Uh, for providing the services till till the time of 1950s the national aeronautical uh, space administration they were using this technology for monitoring the health of the their employees in the space and and in the time of covid in 2020 the technology is to an extent that nurses are also widely utilizing this facility to provide the patient care so this pandemic has immediately leaped the use of uh, tele tele nursing services so if we say what are the advantages as i said what can you say what are the advantages what do you feel is the advantage for this if we use uh, this tele nursing service or tele health why we are saying uh, oh, these terms together because tele health itself covers tele nursing okay so any organization which use the tele health services tele nursing services they may be providing so what will be the use that anyone who is sitting at a distance you are able to record them and to have a monitoring also of them okay you can have a kind of virtual visit as i said if the uh, uh, ostomy is there or trauma is there you are able to see the patient through the video conferencing okay so you can have a virtual visit and as i said if the patient has any query they can ask you the questions and it is a portal to check the test results so if someone is doing the rbs monitoring the blood sugar monitoring the bp monitoring so you can get the results sitting at a distance even to get the appointments to get the test results everything we get to utilize the telehealth services so you must have seen also during the time of covid also we were getting the reports we were getting the reports so everyone was able to see the reports so that was the utilization of technology so it has served as a boon and that is how the nurses also started utilizing this uh, services so if this was in the field of service so if you talk about education in the education scenario also how uh, it was utilized you must have attended many webinars during that time so many training courses everything we uh, sitting at home or sitting in the wards also we were able to hear and listen and do the training so for distance education for patient education this was uh, in a great use and this is in great use now also so and for even for administrative purposes it can be used so for if we have any meetings in conferences we can use it for supervision it can be used uh, it also serve as a online information for the data system or data health health, health data which can be managed through this uh, tele nursing services overall health system integration can be done so overall health system integration is required because if we say like we have the reports of uh, the patient's diagnostic reports are there the bp or what investigations are done and this has to be consulted also with the physician okay
okay and there has to be coordination with the dietitian also suppose if the cases of diabetes are there or diabetic foot are there so we have to have a coordination with different health team members which is possible with the if we use the telehealth services and also if we have seen during the time of covid that if we wanted to have see the patients and to have a uh, distancing also so that was possible through the use of the tele nursing services tele medicine facilities so if we talk about telemedicine how it was providing the you uh, of uses same the diagnostic of the patient the consultation of the patient the follow up visits of the patient was possible during the time and now also it is possible because of the telemedicine facilities so patients sitting at home they have done the consultation so how many of you have consulted on uh, uh, you know utilize the telemedicine facilities two ra two hands are raising so uh, during the time of covid also now we we face so much of problem in getting the consultation and uh, um, uh, someone want to share what was your experience sitting yeah. keep sitting Okay. so you feel at ease also that sitting at home you could consult uh, so what was happening is like the time when you are not able to uh, get out of the home or you have to maintain the physical distance so sitting at home also you are able to consult a specialist so nowadays this you will see that a lot of hospitals or most of the hospitals they are utilizing this telemedicine facility because patients find it at ease taking appointments they don't need to stand in the long queues for this for taking the consultation from the specialist doctors so what is so why we actually require tele nursing so why we require tele nursing because we we can save a lot of travel time for the patients so you you can sit at home and have a consultation from the uh, uh, the nurses it will save your time it will save the distance patient need not to be standing in the long queues you can if you have just a query suppose for sometimes patient just comes to the hospital like what what uh, how many times you have to take this drug so for that simple query they can have a tele consultation for this so support education to the patient monitoring of the patient condition so which all conditions do you think we can monitor the patients in this to tele monitoring tele nursing services bp so condition which in which we need to monitor the bp so hypertension cases can be diabetes cases yes so that that will come under, come under tele health services so in tele nursing services suppose a wound is there we need to monitor the condition of wound so that can be done so any condition especially the conditions which are chronic and in which the patient requires routine monitoring routine education and support and follow up so conditions like diabetes hypertension neurological disorders okay so in them we can use this tele nursing services uh this was a study which is a telemedicine as a new paradigm in the 21st century this this is a literature review which included 10 articles from different databases and it was from 2019 to 2021 it has uh, included the databases like super direct uh, science direct and sage so the this study concluded that this telenursing is actually a solution to answer many challenges so it can uh, it is very efficient and it provides the quality health services okay so the summary of 10 articles which was included in this uh, literature review they said that it the in this technology is beneficial to support the health services to the clients so nurses has many ways to facilitate the patient's need and they can provide the care so ultimately this uh, this uh, literature review said that concluded that tele nursing services if utilized by the hospitals and the nurses will be a great help to the patients so in uh, i will take two studies which were uh, done in this and how they utilizes like in the patients who were of copd or heart failure they they said that it is one of the cost effective way of giving health services to the patients so cost effective in the sense patient need not to travel 
so they it saves their time it saves their effort it saves the time of traveling the cost of traveling and someone coming from very far off areas so it it is more cost effective in those terms also the study was done on patients who were having diabetes and those were those who were under monitoring for the diabetes so for them also the study concluded that it is a inexpensive way of providing the health care so nurses can utilize this tele nursing services to communicate with the patient to provide education to the patients and they can tell the patients what kind of uh, care is required for them so uh, these were the two like uh, we can utilize and we you have seen in copd you have seen in diabetes cases tele nursing also is used in psychiatry so what can be the use in psychiatry is like the counseling of the patient the support for the patients and are you aware that uh, during the time of covid uh, uh, the aims was also running the uh, support services in the guest house the nursing students and the faculty they were involved and they were doing this tele nursing services to support the patients who were having covid so the counseling the support which is required they can be provided through the tele nursing services in cases if we talk about cases of oncology so it can be widely utilized for cases who require the survivorship care for the palliative care for symptom management because they also the chronically they require the care from the nurses and support if we talk about pediatrics so you must have seen the queries of patient, the parents of the children so many queries they have about what to be given can the child go to the school can the child play very small small queries are there so for which if we utilize the tele nursing services they can be of great use follow up information can be given so some there are some times when we can just monitor the patient at distance through video conferencing and there are times when the patient requires to come to the hospital so that if the nurses are there they can best judge and tell that when to come to the hospital when is the next follow up required in the hospital and we can tell them the frequently asked questions we can clarify that so what is the benefit we talked in terms of the patient so what is the benefit to the nurses benefit to the nurses is it's one way we can say that it's a it's a new uh, area which is coming up and it is felt that the if you we can have the flexible working hours for the nurses who are working in the tele nursing area the salaries can be improved in the less amount of hours which you pay more job satisfaction is there because you directly know that the patient has a query you have solved it you have given the education and you are sitting at a distance and during the time of covid uh, the nurses were even allowed to sit at home and then do this in other countries so that is how the flexible working hours are there that less traveling cost so if someone doesn't have to come to the hospital okay and as a new career option many people are liking this data sharing we can do in this and rapid response time like someone um, someone is um, a depressed client is there and has is thinking of suicide so what happens is immediately when the patient calls on the uh, number and you provide the support you uh, you you counsel so you get the immediate feedback and the reward kind of you are able to manage the situations or refer to the to the physicians if we say in terms of patient what other benefits are there patient sitting in the remote areas also they will be able to utilize the facilities of health, of healthcare services so they don't don't need to travel so it saves a lot of travel time now it also is beneficial for the people who are traveling so this happens that if you are traveling to some other city and you do not know what where is the hospital what is the hospital who is a good doctor whom to consult so immediately you get the consultation on the phone so you the patients also get a high quality of care and they don't need to suppose to travel for this they don't have to stand in long queue and they they immediately get the consultation so that is the benefit to the patients so when we talk about tele nursing services so we need to understand that how the tele health services work in any organization so mostly right now the utilization is through the mobile health apps which are there m health through the video and audio technology and the remote patient monitoring other technology is the store and forward technology so mobile uh, technology we all are aware of that so many uh, apps are there in the phone which we utilize for what kind of uh, diet to be taken how many steps in a day i have gone so we we go through that so these mobile health apps are there tele which is utilized 
then real time interaction is there so real time interaction as i said patients can interact in the real time so we through video conferencing they can clarify their doubts then remote patient monitoring is like patients when they are sitting in a hilly area or a remote area they can feed their information of what was the rbs level what is their bp going on and through the distance also we can see their records and monitor the patients so this can also be utilized for the conditions when they are having some chronic problems so this is the whole way that there is a collection of information which is transmitted then evaluated then it is notified then intervened then store and forward technology as we said the whole information is stored and it is forwarded then during the time of uh, covid how the telehealth was utilized we all are aware about the arogya setu app which was utilized it, the tele nursing services also the telehealth services were also utilized for high risk patients so there was advisory like all those who are um, who are at high risk because everyone was ra running to the hospitals to get hospitalized but everyone was not requiring hospitalization so what to be done in the in those cases all those people could sit at home and they were just screened for and monitored so those who were the high risk cases then patients in the in different hospitals it was utilized like pga mr they it, they use this technology to follow up the neurosurgical patients then uh, they also utilize it for the real time novel monitoring of the patient uh, for the donning and doffing procedure so uh, what happened is the during that time you have seen everyone became so techno savvy because the it was the demand of the hour that we have to utilize the tele health services tele nursing services so it becomes a primary uh, primary method of delivering the care now this during from the time of this covid now you have seen that this technology uses has gone a high rate of increase and we are utilizing in different areas like for education so so many webinars nowadays come up for the field of education it is vastly utilized for the field of research in leadership in leadership so we see in the tele nursing also we have a vast area which has opened up with the this tele nursing services so if we talk about that in different areas of nursing service nursing education nursing administration and nursing research we are using this tele health services so how it is for the training like for simulation also it is done for the didactic approach of teaching for capacity building for training of the nurses so for all this the tele health nursing services are utilized now but what are the challenges or issues or problems we face in tele nursing what challenges we faced how many of you have been utilizing uh, this uh, tele nursing in some way or other what challenges we have like network issues are there so you have to have a good network for this and use of technology okay so because we didn't had any training no we are not the it professionals that we had all the training for this and we are you have seen the teachers also overnight they started taking the online exams online classes everything same way nurses also everything online going on so what is there because there was little or no training for uh, this so that was one of the challenge and no information also was there plus no standard guidelines were there for that though they are now coming up gradually so to ensure the client's conversation with the registered nurse is also one of the challenge okay so this what conversation is going on because sometimes if the patient claims that i was given wrong information so then that also becomes a challenge so what kind of communication going on that also becomes a challenging thing in this and if there is a disrespect in the dialogue so if you have a patient in the hospital in the ward and they uh, they they say something wrong you can correct them then if they okay but what happens if someone sitting in far and abuses you and they say something then you can't have control for it so that also becomes a challenging situation for nurses then confidentiality of the information so what information they are saying and how confidentially we are able to keep that information that is also one thing and informed consent so whenever we are using the uh, tele nursing services or any hospital is organized uh, is using the telehealth services they have to have ensure that they have a informed consent from the patients 
because sometimes if something happens to the patient they may sue the hospital stating that i was not informed and i was given wrong information by the nurses so there are many ethical issues to also this like uh, as i said informed consent is one thing and then uh, we have to have a like a backup facility available so if any hospital is using telehealth so they have to have a backup system that how in cases of any technical glitches how to handle so now because of the problems we we immediately started utilizing the technology that time and then the probably started facing some problems so the standards and guidelines they come up uh, that what what should be there okay so what should be there if we uh, use this facility so in there what can be the conditions in which the tele nursing should not be used so it should not be used what do you think in where we should not utilize the tele nursing services if you feel that there is some emergent condition or acute care is required and the patient has to come to the hospital so then you can just guide the patient to come to the hospital okay any other condition where you feel you cannot you should not use it in person examination is required yes. mlc cases are there in person examination is required okay so if the patient has to come to the hospital examined and then only the to be given care so in those conditions if there is a protocol driven cases to be given care is to be given in those conditions the patient has to come to the hospital immediate intervention is required okay so in those conditions we should not use tele nursing services then informing the patient as i said we have to inform the patient before starting with the tele nursing services so hospital has the the guidelines regulations like they have to take the informed consent and they have to inform the patient before starting with this and all these things should be told to the patient in simple and clear languages so that they understand what is expected out of them and we have to have a proper setup for this tele nursing services so we have to have the camera setup and it has to be like during the time of covid it was done at home but it is ideal to have in the a system in the office where from it is to be performed so there has to be a setup from where it should be performed and there has to be a contingency plan for referrals okay where you can refer in cases of any technical glitches then uh, patient management and evaluation system should be there like in cases uh, uh, when when we are doing for the patients who are uh, who do not understand the language okay so in those conditions we should not do so we have to have a patient management and evaluation system that the nurse should be culturally competent with the culture of the people where from they are doing the tele nursing and there has to be quality assurance like for this tele health setup also it is properly functioning how frequently it is utilized that monitoring is required and billing also now patient says that i am sitting at home who has given care to me you are just talking to me why you are asking for bills now it is it's not the case in the government hospital but with the private hospitals who may be utilizing this facility so you have to tell in advance that what is expected out of them what will be the amount of uh, 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 the payment they have to do for each consultation then what is the disadvantage for this like you cannot it cannot fully replace no. the patient have if they have to give the blood sample they have to come to the hospital or reach to the uh, lab and there as i said there is always a threat to privacy and safety so in the institution like aims we have seen the the hacking which has happened so you can consider what happens so safety and privacy is always an issue then uh, the this whole setup has to be there so every small organization may not have this kind of setup to provide the uh, tele nursing facilities to the patients then poor color quality if there is a transmission of records it take the uh, the net uh, net is not very good so this poor transmission quality because of which the physician they sometimes do not get to know what is there you also do not get to know what is the reading written okay. then immediate, immediately you cannot start the treatment that is also one of the problem that for that patient has to come to the hospital and in cases of any internet internet facilities if they are not there so and also you cannot provide means the poor patients who are there in the rural areas they will not be able to get utilize these facilities so what is the current scenario in uh, india we have multiple uh, uh, setups where from we can utilize the tele health and tele nursing services considering the time in mind i'll just uh, show you the slides and tell so we have many support system in india like we for tele nursing services tele health services so this is the support by the uh, department of information technology state government so um, 
what is the problem is impediments are like privacy as i said is one of the issue we have the limited access lack of training lack of guidelines and lack of confidence in the tele nursing services which are there so on which area on these areas we need to work up so this is the tele uh, in aims also we utilize the tele health services and it was utilized for tele consultation and tele tele follow up so for tele education also was given to the patients uh, these are the programs which are run in aims with the tele uh, health services this already discussed the disadvantages so what is the way forward is like uh, seeing the scenario seeing the problems which we are facing the challenges which we are facing and also for the nursing we we face the licensing this thing like in the licensing is uh, the registration is varying from state to state so that also becomes an issue like the nurses who are sitting in the delhi for them to uh, to have the teleconference uh, tele nursing services giving to the nurses in sitting in the kerala uh, patients who are in the kerala or in the um, east so that also registration is one uh, challenge which we are facing right now so way forward is like uh, you seeing this scenario the benefits of this uh, tele nursing services and the satisfaction of the patients which is also one important area so how satisfied they feel with the tele nursing services which are provided so many researches are there in the field which say that patient feel satisfied many studies say that they feel satisfied with the hospital visits so seeing all these things we have to utilize the tele nursing services this was one of the study which was done during the time of covid uh, the on the effectiveness and barriers of tele health services during covid 19 time so this study concluded that it if tele nursing services are utilized it will be of great use for the patients so ultimately we can say that um, there are many pros to it and many cons to it seeing the both the sides of it we have to take the which one is much heavier so the benefits are much more compared to the problems which are we are facing those problems which you are facing we can have the standards and guidelines already the guidelines are given by the nim hands for tele nursing services okay so following those guidelines we can use use the tele nursing services thank you for patient listening thank you ma'am for your valuable inputs and sharper and knowledge related to tele nursing so i would like to invite cecilia ma'am for giving momento as a token of appreciation to pragya ma'am thank you ma'am now i would like to invite dr sumit malhotra professor center for community medicine aims new delhi sir has has been honored dr vijay narayan award for the best paper presented and have received aims excellence research commendation award for his pioneering work on neural tube defects at balabgarh 2017 with your enriched knowledge and experience we are looking forward to your session sir welcome dr sumit malhotra Okay very good afternoon to everyone and thank you for the kind introduction um so i think this is in continuity what was going on uh, you know as was being touched upon probably more uh, so from the morning you must be hearing about this uh, you know use of digital approaches is the way forward and covid 19 you know pandemic times we all have tested uh, you know the utility and the scope of these services and in fact everyone uh, was forced to you know get into this modality because uh, physical access and uh, you know distancing norms and restriction uh, of visits to hospitals everybody resorted to this and in fact whosoever is in the health profession or nursing profession uh you know was made to uh enter into some modality uh wherein telecommunication was utilized so uh it's very important in the current scenario and uh, in fact uh, uh 
uh, what was being realized during the pandemic times uh, can be you know carried further and the learnings that we all have uh, can be taken further even in the routine practice so of course there are advantages and uh, you know there are limitations also uh, but i think whenever there are uh, you know whenever we go forward uh, these limitations will have to be circumvented will have to be mitigated will have to be uh, you know solved so in next uh, couple of minutes uh, i will just take you uh, to some of the aspects which the whole country is thinking about you know utilizing telemedicine and already what is there in the uh, practice uh, we have a national telemedicine network and also we have a nice and jeevni platform so i'll talk a little bit about that and how the tele approach is utilized even in mentoring so tele mentoring is another very important area uh, wherein lot is being done so uh because this has been touched upon uh, i'm sure you know what telemedicine is all about it's about you know delivery of healthcare services when distance is a critical factor so we are actually operating uh keeping in mind the boundary of distance so we are at a distance but then we are utilizing the information and communication technologies uh and ultimately all of this for betterment of patient care uh and handling patient care to improve their outcomes so whether it's diagnosis whether it's treatment whether it's prevention uh or education i mean all of these spheres the tele approaches could be utilized and uh, uh also for health care providers uh, it's actually a boon in terms of you know decision support systems and also you know the mentoring aspects which is related so it's a win win situation to be utilized by both uh, the healthcare provider side and also the patient side now we all know uh, that there are barriers you know when it comes to reaching to the masses there are number of barriers and the number of barriers relate to uh, that there will be certain geographical boundaries that will not be able to be touched upon because there will be geographical inaccessibility there are still many parts of the country wherein you know people have to travel a lot uh, in order to reach to a specialist service uh, and that relates to you know missing your wages and lot of productivity time loss so this is one option that that exists when uh, you know you don't have to travel and uh, you know sitting at one place near your home in comfort or you know within your say in rural areas if you have a healthcare facility you can actually connect to another place where in specialist is sitting and that's how the consultation can happen so utilization of all this uh, uh, for uh, taking care of these barriers uh, has been a very very promising entity in the current times and the another aspect is equity many times you know people uh are not provided care in terms of that they are uh they 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 have poor income they belong to low social economic status marginalized communities wherein the access uh uh is basically you know affected by the equity concern so then these approaches are very very important all of you must have heard about universal health coverage we want everybody to be covered right uh, and government also has an agenda that people don't have to shell out uh, from their pockets so you know public health utilization uh, should be enhanced uh, particularly in order to reduce out of pocket expenditures so so considering all that you know uh, the it approaches are very very important uh, so the elements that are related to this include providing you know uh, decision support systems and i think the artificial intelligence is going to uh, Uh, help us in in having these algorithms and also uh, helping the providers the healthcare providers and the nursing professionals uh, in order to make meta uh, you know management decisions uh, so as i mentioned to you that uh, the the barriers have to be overcome so telemedicine actually you know tells you uh, and uh, the other aspect is that uh, uh it gives so much ease that like, like for example if this lecture is getting recorded and being live streamed you know there are many people who are not sitting here but still getting benefit out of it 
that's actually the beauty uh, of this, right? So, uh, I, uh, in future, it may happen that, you know, the classes are happening entirely on this fashion, wherein, you know, we are sitting somewhere and we are accessing or, uh, you know, in classical fashion, um, uh, if you see the training cascade in which the trainings happen, um, if, uh, you know, a remote district is there, where trainers are not of high quality, okay, but we want, you know, the, the quality should be there and, and if the training is not delivered in quality, of course, you know, the absorption of the whatsoever educational aspects you wanted, it gets affected. So, at every level, you know, from, from above, at the national level to the bottom, there is dilution of messages that happens. So, this can be taken care, you know, if suppose uh, uh, we are sitting in Delhi, but we are talking in Kerala, okay, so, uh, or in say uh, an island wherein health service is there, but there is no specialist, so you can get connected and actually uh, 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 it makes a lot of uh, uh, positive uh, influence to the system there if uh, a quality level training is also being imparted, right, so it's a beauty of this tele connect approaches in, in, in variety of means in which you want to connect. Well, we have a national telemedicine network which has been operational for a long period of time and uh, uh, AIMS is also a party and I think the last speaker was also uh, touching upon um, this particular aspect. Uh, but also the mandate is to connect the district health system wherein we have the sub-district hospitals, the PHCs and the community health centers should also get connected, you know, to the district level uh, or uh, medical college level facilities. Now, eSanjeevni is a very important platform which is being launched by Government of India, you know, from 2019 in order to enhance the teleconsultations and currently the health wellness centers that we have, you know, across the country, eSanjeevni is, is being utilized to promote, uh, uh, you know, consultations with the doctors. You have three tier mechanism wherein the hubs uh, are at places wherein you have uh, the medical college or the specialist facility is there and the lower, you know, sub-center level or the PHC level health wellness centers can get connected to higher level. Uh, the, we have now this regular consultations. We have this community health officers. Uh, I hope you are aware about this new cadre that is there uh, that's being posted at the sub-center level health wellness centers. So, they do a lot of these video consultations because they don't have the entire prescribing rights. So, uh, because of that, you know, uh, they get connected to the specialist doctors and they do a lot of, uh, then they can manage the conditions and the benefit of the patient is that the patient uh, is going to get the treatment, uh, you know, from the specialist and the drugs, drug dispensation can happen at, at this lower level, uh, um, you know, so, it's a very easy system and, and I think all of us are uh, engaged in utilization of online platforms now. We do online shopping and a uh, lot many things, you know, so and registration, you know, so it's very simple. You, you register yourself, you get OTPs and then, you know, you fill, you get the access to the platform but after certain validation and then you enter the patient details and then once all this is being fixed, you know, you are in a queue. Uh, you know, uh, wherein the hub facility is there and they, uh, uh, in a sequential fashion, uh, they will be, you know, taking these calls and will be connecting to the lower level facilities. And once you get the pop-up of, uh, uh, you know, call now, so they pick, they just, and they connect and that's how the consultation happens. Uh, of course, um, we want this to be scaled up. We want this to be... Uh, uh, you know, uh, going further, there are limitations, but I think uh, uh, it will it will take its own uh, journey and it will also expand to everywhere. Currently, the utilization varies, you know, from lower facilities and from one facility to another facility. So, this is the kind of a, you know, portal that it looks like is Sanjeevni Outpatient Services. It's a kind of an app service which is there and then you, you as the steps that I enumerated, you log in and you uh, get access to the specialist consultation. And there are uh, hubs that are made, you know, uh, within the medical colleges and they get connected to different facilities. Also, certain district hospitals uh, have these hubs. 
So the utilization data, you know, the in January shows there's a huge utilization. Well, often uh, uh, the utilization also uh, is enhanced because there's a push from the system. Like health and wellness centers have to have a minimum number of, you know, consultations, and that get, data gets recorded. So there is a lot expansion happening up, uh, particularly to enhance uh, the reach of the services and uh, mitigating, uh, you know, the access problems. Well, then, you know, there are sites that are prone to disasters. There are sites wherein there are a lot of, uh, you know, people visiting pilgrim places. So there also, you know, uh, you have to have these kind of services available. So this is another spot wherein, you know, teleconsultation, telemedicine approaches are being utilized. And, uh, you know, the health services are, are in reach of people who are visiting this. And sometimes the emergencies can happen. And uh, they may actually, you know, uh, uh, these services can be of great help at that particular places. Uh, disasters, definitely, and I think the COVID-19 pandemic also was one of the kind of disasters. So we actually utilized a lot. Uh, uh, we had, uh, you know, the clinical grand rounds, the clinical rounds, and also, uh, in fact, uh, uh, all over the country, and uh, even the nursing college was engaged in delivery of these, uh, uh, you know, sessions through uh, the the you know, telemodalities. Uh, there were also helplines and teleconsultations that were in routine. And in fact, every department resorted to it because uh, patients were not coming and uh, the access to the hospital was not there because of, uh, you know, closing of uh, hospital. But then patients had to be provided services and many of the chronic conditions, you know. Uh, so so there, was an, there was a roster, appointment system all being created through this and, and people were being connected to the doctors through this particular approach. We do a lot of teleconferencing these days and telecast of life surgeries is very, very commonly that's been done. A lot of apps have come up uh, and there are a lot of examples, uh, you know, both in teaching sector and also delivery of services. One example through the neurology department is Smart India app, particularly to enhance care for, uh, uh, you know, stroke patients. And you all know that in stroke, time is of paramount importance. And earlier you see care you know, the outcomes get affected. So, uh, and particularly people are not aware about how to, uh, you know, manage. So this is one, uh, uh, you know, kind of health service which is available. Uh, people can access and then, you know, get uh, 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 through a distance teleconsultation mode. The management can also be informed to the providers at the peripheral level. So this is what is the snapshot and how this looks. So there are many, many such examples of apps which are getting into, uh, 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 you know, practice, even a lot of psychological uh, 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 services, you know, the cognitive behavior therapies and many such consultations are also being done now through digital modalities and, and uh, utilizing the uh, apps. Uh, so we did have a lot of uh, services available to help people and also to make the uh, health uh, you know, uh, facilities uh, get the requisite skills, particularly to manage, uh, uh, you know, all aspects related to COVID, uh, which was actually a new entity and also to manage the lower respiratory tract infections and in severe cases uh, that were occurring as, as due to COVID. I mean, all the, uh, the skills were being imparted and we utilize all of these spaces, you know, to have these sessions, including the set center and, and the other things. So it helped a lot of... Uh, uh, ways, you know, to the medical nursing fraternity uh, and there are definite advantages of it. One model that I want to illustrate is the NICO model, which is extension of, uh, uh, you know, community health outcomes. We do it uh, uh, with our rural center. So we are one of the innovation learning centers, you know, to NU district in Haryana. So NU uh, is Mewat. Uh, it's an aspirational district, you know, ahead of Gurgaon, Sona, you have the new district, quite poor indicators, the only aspirational district that exists in uh, uh, Haryana is uh, new. So aspirational district is a term which is being coined by the Niti Aayog. So uh, we want these districts to be transformed, particularly in terms of the poor indicators that they have. So we do a lot of uh, telementoring, particularly with the new CADA. Uh, community health officer. So I did touch upon, you know, CHOs. Community health officers is a new cadre, either with a nursing background, you know, uh, staff nurse or the Ayurvedic practitioners 
who are being now positioned at uh, uh, sub center level health wellness centers so they uh, are being you know uh, uh, they they have to clear a entrance exam and state uh, health authorities usually hold these exams and then they are offered you know 6 months induction training program and then they are being placed and positioned to provide you know uh, there are 12 packages which are being introduced uh, as part of comprehensive primary health care which uh, community health officers uh, uh, are supposed to provide care. So it's a new CADA and a lot of learning needs are there. So we do connect, you know, every month, once or twice uh, with the community health officers that are positioned at, uh, you know, health and wellness centers at NU. So, so we do a kind of a tele-education uh, program and we utilize Zoom, uh, uh, you know, so this, so this eco utilizes Zoom and uh, uh, there are a variety of, uh, you know, primary health care conditions that are being covered. So we had programs related to, you know, hypertension, diabetes, the chronic morbidities that are there. So just like a regular, you know, Zoom session, but we do a lot of uh, uh, interactive activities within this uh, one to two hour session with CHOs, particularly to engage them uh, and, uh, you know, a structured training package is being uh, delivered even the skill demonstrations are being done as part of this uh, uh, model so a lot of videos can also be uh, you know shown and of course you know any training program will have a pre-test need assessment and all that can be done through online modality so now you all can fill you also must be filling many of these forms that come and a link is there and you are supposed to you know fill these things so similarly you know we do uh, one of the other important unique feature of this program is that the, every uh, session that we hold there is a case discussion. So, so, so one case has one or two cases have to be presented by the uh, you know uh, uh, trainees, so CHOs present from their own area, and uh, we generally have the discussion around managing that particular case. So, so in order to maintain quality, uh, you know this this is particularly uh, included. When we started, we had, uh, uh, you know, challenges, I mean, and, and this is generic that I'm talking about, that, you know, net connectivity still sometimes poses a challenge in many areas. So I think there is an expansion, but yes, definitely, you know, sometimes that poses a challenge. Uh, 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 there is a difference in urban and rural areas when it comes to uh, digital technology reach. Also, technological illiteracy, of course, you know, we are picking it up and uh, everybody is improving but still there is a lot uh, that is uh, to be uh, you know achieved uh, of course you know the tele approach will i mean the advantage is that you are taking care of the distance but yes uh, sometimes you know a patient wants direct specialist uh, contact well uh, uh, that can be taken care you know if if the uh, if the visits are being scheduled in a way that uh, when it's needed, it's being done. But it, but it is, you know, uh, to scale up services and to enhance reach, I think this is one of the very important uh, solution. And as with IT, I mean, everybody is concerned about data confidentiality, security, anonymity. Those remain, you know, uh, uh, important concerns. But I think it's a way to go. And uh, there are a lot of better outcomes uh, that can be achieved in terms of reaching to people. Now, with the more uh, digital health, uh, uh, you know, interventions and particularly creation of ABHA IDs and uh, all those things that are happening, I think uh, the expansion is going to take place and everybody is going to get into, uh, uh, you know, electronic health records. So still a lot has to be done in this uh, field wherein we create electronic health records and in fact in covid uh, had we uh, uh, you know had these electronic health records a lot of linkages and a lot of studies and research could have been possible but in our country this was not that much uh, robust but i think that's the way to go and uh, 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 you know in in coming times a lot of investment is being done uh, uh, in this uh, uh, regard so i think if you are connected with the uh, you know, profession of service delivery uh, in terms of health or nursing, you know, uh, I think we can't now escape utilizing uh, 
tele approaches. So, so that's the way forward, uh, and we all have to get uh, uh, accustomed uh, to it. And uh, all of us use now smartphones, so we have now apps, and you know we deal with the apps. And health uh, uh, sector is also utilizing, you know, delivery through apps. So with that, I end. I think uh, because from morning, uh, you know, you are getting the glimpses of all of this. So it must have been repetitive. Uh, but then uh, that's the theme of the day. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Malhotra, for the interesting and inspiring session and uh, introducing us to e-Sanjeevni platforms and various other projects which have been going. So I invite uh, Ms. Uh, Manita Ma'am to kindly present the token of appreciation to Sir. Sir, please can you stand in front of the camera? <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Okay, I leave. Thank you. So, this was our last session by Dr. Sumit Malhotra. Uh, we'll be having a post test uh, in the morning. All of you have. Fill in the pre-test book. So uh, we'll be having the post-test. Five ten minutes. We'll take the one. Okay. Yes. Oh. 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 Oh.
But that's for the day. Hope it was. How was your learning? We'll have feedback later on. Now we will go to the group activity. Okay. So we have little activity for you, and we are dividing you into three groups so that each group will have an activity, and we give you time. Ten minutes of group activity and five minutes for presentation. So it depends on the time that you take. Okay. So let's start number. We we'll count number one, two, three. Let's start from here. One, two, one, two, two, one, one, two, three, three, two, or three. Sir,
Thank <laughs> you. 
Good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Matthew Ogis, working in the patient comes to our area we'll just enter the UHID from the entering the UHID this app will fetch the automatically information from the e-hospital what all details so already the patient is admitted in a particular ward so all those details will come we just select the uh, name of the patient the as a nurse must be how to do the initial assessment when the patient comes to our area according to the what if the patient is what the requirement is something different if it is an emergency so like that we have to do the initial assessment including history physical examination all will be there we just just enter on 
some of some of the option will be in the drop down just for the select only but something uh, sometimes we need to give some like history some we have to uh, uh, history of your uh, present illness maybe this many days we have to fever like that we have to enter it then then next step we need to the physical examination again this thing head to toe already drop down will just select it only then system wise it will have that is also we have to just select only drop down everything will be in the drop down so we have to no need to write or type then uh, it is also uh, will linked with the e hospital uh, lab labs lab body so that you can also get the uh, investigation results also and also we have one more option uh, treatment uh, will also link with some pharmaceutical uh, uh, app so that we will get the each medicines uh, side effects too. for example when we are giving a particular drug antibiotic it will up, uh, will pop up this all main side effects will be there you have to check this warning sir so like that uh, we are planning this um, because it is a combination of more <laughs> and of course it is a of course it is a integrated system so that is our plan Okay, um, I have also developed uh, one app. It's an Android app for my PG thesis. It is named is Can Screen. Can Screen by Matthew Vergisvi. You can download it from the Google Play Play Store. Mm -hmm. It is just a. Sorry. It is just a. Uh, so we know that uh, there are different types of app. It's just Android based app. It's a native type app. It's only works in Android Android uh, software, Android Android operating system. it's a it's a static app it's not a dynamic one static one it's a basically educational app it gives information about the basic uh, cancer screening and prevention techniques so it's mainly focused on cancer breast cancer cervix oral cancer colorectal cancer and testicular cancer so this is actually i developed for the college students so it's uh, almost in 2019 i developed Going on. So, next group, group number two. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, very creative app. I would like to. I am Kunda Sutter from. Uh, NGTTC Gaziabad. I was working here in Ames also for uh, six years, and then I implemented. So my app is Dog and Bell app. So it is very creative. You all uh, might have heard in psychology. It is a training. It is a best training. What happens? What What happens in that dog? If he need food, then we just we add bed. Ah, huh, we add bed in that. So what happens initially? We give food. That dog gets alive. It and means when whenever there is a hunger in that dog, that uh, he's alive. It means he's alive. It then we provide the food. But in it after some time, what happens? Though there is nothing. as we put on the alarm dog sees that i will get my food so same thing happen in human nature also whenever there is alarm we have something we feel that now emergency has come so we gave basic name for my app is dog and bell app and this this app is for mainly designed for icu setting it will trigger first on emergency came from casualty this is this app is mainly used in icu and we get patient from either one we have to press one if patient come from casualty emergency second if patient is from ot third the patient is itself from icu we categorize them priority need whether patient need airway breathing circulation as main survival uh, focus either three of them so 
we can trigger the each system this required most required system by pressing a b and c when patient is categorized in this main needs then we we have to enter management as a to z see there are drugs from adrenaline to <laughs> zolpidem means each drug you can categorize and it is very easy a for adrenaline b for beta blocker c for crystalline so as nurses are well introduced to this we have to enter a to z what kind of drugs we are given then the specialty of this app is third we enter recovery time how much recovery time is required patient whether it's in hours whether it's in days whether it's in weeks the features of this app what it's timely management we uh, we utilize manpower we don't call everybody we call the specialist for this so good management uh, manpower utilization and we buy the golden time for patient the advantage of this app is we need good setting of this for patient we we need to have a good uh, skill skilled hand and sometimes what happens whenever there is alarm <laughs> our nurses doctors uh, they ignore they are this after us what happens burn out so thank you to present please Yes. Good evening. My name is Deepak Das, nursing officer with Pediatrics. 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 Uh, today we are going to present an app. Uh, basically, the name is the Entry app. This is basically for patient hospitalization, and uh, they want to get admitted as early as possible. Uh, once the doctor has confirmed that she is a particular patient, he should be shared the link of the particular app by phone, by WhatsApp or something in the media. So he will get the link, and the patient has to be get uh, installed in his mobile. So the basic benefit of this app is that the patient and nurses must be to manage the admission, and doctors they all want to do this follow up and everything. Okay, the first uh, home page. First of all, they need to log in the app. By using a UHID and RTP should be get connected to for the secure login, and the uh, homepage will come with the uh, departments which department he is supposed to he should supposed to get admitted like hospital, cardio, RTC, MC, general IT. So he has to select this particular department. He need to link. So already he informed that he should be get admitted. Okay. So there suppose my patient get admitted in the pediatric cardiology department. Already got the message that. Uh, They have a bed here this time, so they they can check the status of the bed whether it is available or not. And guess what happened? So early, uh, actually we are uh, deciding the patient and get readmitted or it's another time. So due to some delay, it may happen. So the early patient may not get the bed at the right time, and this patient will lose their entire time in the hospital, maybe hours to day. It may happen. So so we are updating in the system. So you better get this delay for this hours due to some other emergency. Right. So they could prepare themselves. So they can arrange their travel. Suppose they are coming from the outside station, so they could arrange by themselves the time. They could the same. They can save. And the same moment, suppose uh, in emergency department. So we are getting patient from emergency also and through our videos. So the emergency department also has the same access to this app. So they may want to update something because there is emergency patient came for a surgery or something like that. So they can hold this bed or inform us to keep this bed for this patient. So one patient may is coming like that and happening every time. So they can book this bed for a particular patient. In the meantime, so the admitting doctor SR can decide whether which one is the priority condition, either a planned or OPD patient or an emergency patient. So we could manage them itself, and they should be get uh, patient should be get informed time to time. If you have an apology from our side, if it's delay your bed. So they don't feel bad, and uh, they can see other valuable time. I think, I think this app is good for aims because uh, we have seen a lot of patients are waiting for long hours. So definitely it will be helpful. 
that's all. Thank you, all the groups. It was mind blowing session. Yeah, many free apps I developed now. <laughs> In the process of developing. Yeah, it was interesting, quite interesting to see your thoughts, how you have utilized. So, there are a lot of uh, prospects from our end. Like, we know the exact ground reality of the patients that we handle. Okay, it is like no one else can bring about a change in our profession rather than the change from ourselves. Okay, so learning all these different technologies in AI, I hope all of you will contribute yourself in some way to that, so to the profession. In yeah, you can, as we were discussing, these ideas can be uh, take shape, can be taken into good shape and it can be utilized okay you can even shoulder uh, hands with us and we will be all the more okay to involve uh, to happy to be involved in such activities so that productive things come out and it is really benefit to the society at large and for you uh, regarding education as such there are many uh, who websites WHO on top CC courses which are available, okay, and you can register and there are many apps also available. If you are interested, please do let us know, okay, and even OpenAI, OpenAI, I think all of you know ChatGPT, okay, it is very useful, just try it, it is awesome, okay, you will enjoy, try it and so hope the day was useful and fruitful by all means. Can we have the concluding session? Tea break. You will have tea break or we will have the conclusion and then tea. We will conclude, distribute the certificates and then we will have tea break. Okay. So now we will request one or two of you to give feedback. Okay. Followed by feedback then uh, we will have report reading and also the final distribution of certificates followed by and then we'll have tea in this point. Okay? I will request any feedback. Yeah, please. See, definitely AI is important because we have to augment with uh, the growing need of this uh, world because we, we cannot go revert to the olden days but uh, we have to go with current situation. So there is no doubt about it, AI is helpful. But my concern is main, see you, have, you never see what happens when we use more, more technology we become more dependent. And uh, Darwin, as per Darwin's Siddhant, Apna survival karna hai, to khud lado. Huh? Right? Agar hum apne skill nahi use karenge, apne skill ko hum uh, polish nahi karenge, to hum mein kuch jaan nahi rahe, kuch rahegi. See, child take nine months to stand up and start walking. अगर AI की हेल्प से हमारा बच्चा ढाई महीने में तीन महीने में चलने लगेगा, तो how much you will be uh, happy with that? No, you will not happy because nature has its own uh, power, uh, almighty power है उससे. So, so be a good human and be vigilant human. That is very important. I would share one experience in my lifetime. It was in ICU. Uh, the patient was on cardiac uh, monitor sir, and uh, he had some kind of ventilation also. And myself and my doctor was standing. I'm very proud to say that he, that day, thanks God, I was there. Uh, the saturation was means that monitor was telling that patient needs suction to be done. 
the oxygen saturation is getting down and uh, as doctor masses we we uh, that oxygen now we turn on make it 100 percent but we did suction also there is nothing no secretion nothing so we put on the oxygen up to 100 percent then also patient condition was getting down and down nobody was there to help even doctor was not able to realize what happened then i just closed my eyes and uh, I, I said there is something wrong then it took one to two seconds i don't know exactly but i just opened that case for me and i opened that hmd filter and the patient was at ease you cannot believe the patient was at ease the main problem was that HMP filter itself was blocked. See, your intelligence is more important. That is my my message to all. Yeah, very good message. Thank you. This is what the AI is there, but we should know how to actually. Until and unless we don't see, our brains are the superpowers. It is man who invented computers and not computers who invented man. Okay, so we should know how to use it and how to control it. There are AI when you see, it is a simple level AI and uh, an AI which is powerful and a super power AI. Super power AI is a thing wherein it will take over human beings. It will try to control human beings. Okay, so... Superpowers will happen and it is also predicted. Okay, but what, how are we going to monitor it? How are we going to utilize it? Is very much. As she was saying, yeah, it is a very good deal. This children do not know the spelling of words. You though, only you they can write, not why you are you. Okay, so it, it is like they only see the mobile, they know only the gadget, and many a times our spellings are all like. God, what is this? Okay, so, days are becoming worse. Like when uh, this uh, e hospital was not there, we were literally handless without doing anything. We cannot, it was like everything became a standstill. Okay, now with the mobile, we are able to do. See, actually, this mobile which we hold is stealing away all our data. If you hand your hand over your mobile to me for a five minutes, we can tell you about you. This is the status. Everything is being but rational use. We cannot go away from technology. Rather, we have to use technology wisely and intelligently. Any anyone else? You know now NASA has accepted that. UFOs are existing and NASA has also identified some light signals from some million light years away from Earth. Okay, it has sensed and it has accepted. The first time NASA has accepted. NASA has not accepted UFOs many a times, denied. But NASA discovered UFOs long back in the 1800s. Okay, but it did not accept and now a state has come that they are recognizing and they are giving information to the world. Like UFOs are existing and also this light signals from uh, some millions of galaxies away from the earth also signals they have to see. Okay, so this is how the world is progressing. So, yeah. Any any more feedbacks? <laughs> no, feedback form. Okay, so then we we'll give to the organizer. <laughs> uh, now I invite Ms. Patmana to give the vote of thanks. And for the portrait. This to you, Sunday, yes. Then what of the most reading, then only in the time. So,
Miss Bina Abraham. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. San Miss Sanjana Saveda. Mr. Om Prakash. Uh, Mr. Sa Miss uh, Sandra Saju. Miss Tiji Bins. Miss Navita. Miss Rashmi Mayuria. Mr. Rohit Das Sani. Mr. Alok Nagar. Miss Suja Jomon Jacob. I'm so happy to see her today morning. She has come during her walk. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Danesh Kumar. Mr. Kunda Eknath. Mr. H. Wang Zamoy. Miss Rekha Rejimun. Please give them a big clap. Miss Lalita. Mr. Vikas Kuntal. Miss Tushara Jomun. Miss Punsong Dolma. Miss Anita Kumari. Mr. Deepu Das. Mr. Manovic. Ms. Juda Ching Chingi. Sorry for that. Mr. Matthew Varghese.
मिस काजल सैनी मिस अरितिका मिस एल बी रेरू मिस्टर राजा राम माओ मिस प्रतिभा लाल मिस मितायस नायर Uh, I hope all of you have filled the posters. If anybody is left, kindly give them. All of you have finished the posters, no? And feedback forms. Anyone is anyone left for the posters? No. Okay. Now I invite Miss Arpana to give the vote of thanks. Yes. <coughs> Now it is time to honor my faculty colleagues. <laughs> Good evening everyone. Now I'll read the report of today's in-service education program. In-service education program on artificial intelligence in nursing and overview conducted by PBBSC nursing second year students Abhishek, Anita, Arpana, Aswati, Charanjit, Deepa, Anita, Jatin, Jaya Bharti, Jaya, Kanchan, Marina, Megha under the guidance of Ms. Cecilia MS, Ms. Babita Sahu, Ms. Manita Dalal had started at 9 a.m. at Studio One Set Facility Ames, New Delhi. Total 29 participants registered from Main Ames, IRCH, NDDTC, RPC, Cardio Neuro Center, BPS, Surgical Center, JPNA Trauma Center, and NCI Jhajjar. After registration, participants completed the pre-test questionnaire for assessing the baseline knowledge before starting the program. The organizing secretary of this workshop, Ms. Cecilia MS, welcomed the participants and gave a brief introduction of the in-service education program by highlighting the objectives. Organizing chairperson, Dr. Sasi Mawar, Associate Professor, College of Nursing, Ames, unfolded the theme, Artificial Intelligence in Nursing and Overview. Dr. Sasi Mawar had also stressed the importance of having in-service education on AI in nursing. The guest of honor of the event, Ms. Nirmal Khan, Nursing Superintendent, Ames, New Delhi, gave the inaugural address and delivered inspirational talk and stressed the importance of artificial intelligence in nursing. She also stressed the importance of updating knowledge for delivering high-quality care by applying AI-based technology. Uh, Ms. Babita Sahu, Tutor, College of Nursing, Ames, New Delhi, thanked the eminent persons for their presence and also with the organization team for their efforts. After Chiribek, the first session was by Dr. Deva Sanati Pati,
professor department of radiology aims delhi re regarding artificial intelligence and healthcare and overview sir also stress the importance and explain that how ai and healthcare are interrelated the second session was by dr l gopichandran associate professor college of nursing aims new delhi who highlighted the ai based clinical decision support the next session was by ms cecilia ms associate professor college of nursing aims that is on artificial intelligence role into nurse patient care the fourth se fourth session was by mr anurag krishna sharma programmer computer facility aims on harnessing the power of ai post lunch session the fifth session was by dr pragya pathak associate professor college of nursing aims on the topic of tele nursing the next session was by dr sumit madhotra professor center for community medicine aims for highlighting the topic of telecommunication it was a very interesting session participants were divided into groups for ice breaking session after that post test questions were filled by the participants pre test mean knowledge score of the participants were 9.1 which improved to 12 after the session now i'd like to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the organizing team first and foremost i thank our organizing secretary ms cecilia ms associate professor <laughs> college of nursing aims for her constant support guidance and encouragement my heart fills with lots of gratitude and respect for our distinguished guest speakers i owe special gratitude to our organizing committee members ms babita sahu nursing tutor college of nursing aims ms manita dalal nursing tutor college of nursing aims who went an extra mile and made this workshop an unforgettable event above all i thank all the distinguished participants present here accepting our invitation i believe that this n service education program has certainly provided you an insight into the artificial intelligence in nursing this in service program has been possible and successful because of your active participation by spending your valuable time here i hope you had a fruitful day thank you all for your patience and active participation special thanks to mr sudan technical staff of said facility who helped us with all the technical work thank you sir for making sure uh, that the program went on smoothly last but not the least i thank you my friends for your hard work and cooperation in making this was works of a resounding success finally i would like to conclude by saying that predicting the future isn't magic it's artificial intelligence once again i thank you all for your attention thank you everyone and have a very good evening now uh, so now you all can head towards the pantry for tea thank you okay.